Hello, welcome to the Mostly Yoga Podcast. My name is Aaron and this is my show. Thanks for listening, thanks for being here and if you're a long-time listener and you like what you hear, you can go to coffee.com slash mostly yoga, that's spelled ko-fi.com slash mostly yoga, to show your support. If you decide to donate, uh, thank you. And if you don't, that's okay as well, because you can still listen to all these episodes and future episodes for free. And I'm happy to make it, because I like to have interesting conversations with the interesting people that I choose to have on, who I'm going to have on. So yeah, uh, thanks for listening. Like and subscribe if you haven't already. Whatever, you know, wherever you're listening to this on, Spotify, most people, I think most people listen to it on Spotify. Uh, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever other third-party podcast apps that you're listening to it on, uh, leave a review. Uh, give me some feedback, give me some stars, and help me get my ratings up. Make it look good. Thank you very much. Mm, uh, as you may have already read from this podcast description, this episode is probably one of the most room room. This episode is probably one of the most revealing episodes that I've done so far, and this episode is also brought to you by BC Flow State. Mm. Rediscover the way you move, feel, and perform through the use of natural and authentic movements that you can help. That you can help. That can help you bring strength, regain your mobility and reconnect yourself with your physical body. For content on mobility, movement, and other feats of strength, check out his Instagram at bcflowstate. Just to check out his check check this handsome guy out and his and his movements and his flows and all his other uh, workshops that are coming up as well. Hmm. And uh, speaking of hot stuff, if you like chili, if you like some chili to spice up your life. Does that sound corny? I feel like I need to change this. If you would like some chili to spice up your life, check out Red Dot Chili Peppers, a Singapore-based chili-making person who's my friend. It's my friend Steph, who makes this unique homemade cilantro chili. Uh, if you If you can't go a meal without some heat, then for the love of all things spicy and green and good, Order yourself a bottle or two or three of this green chili and on her IG or Facebook page at Red Dot Chili Peppers. The red dot being Singapore. That's the reference for our little red dot. And also, I don't know if you've heard, there is a new booch bitch in town taking over the kombucha scene in Singapore. What a booch! If you haven't already figured it out, is created by my friend Tiff Tiffanis, a uh, fellow yoga teacher, and she's she's also been a guest on this podcast, episode twenty. You can go check it out. Um, so what a booch, which is the name of her thing, offers freshly brewed kombucha that's flavored to your liking with unique and fruity flavorless flavors like strawberry on basil. Lychee rose, apple pie, pina colada, which is I think my favorite, and many more. If you are a fan of this probiotic beverage, head over to Waterbooch on IG to order your booch today. All the links in the description below. Thing thing thing. Okay. So if you've ever practiced at yoga movement you probably know who Mayan is, my guest for today. Not only is she a very good friend of mine, she's also the person who mm, is probably the, the, the one that inspired me to take my YTT and has helped me through my yoga journey all the, in, in, in so many ways. Uh, she's also the person that has, I think she's the one that inspired me to start this podcast because of our, because of the interesting conversations that I've had with her and my friends, and I was like, oh, I, I decided to start it. Yeah. 
and I've been wanting to get her on for the longest time ever since it started, like you know, fucking like a year ago. And so I'm glad that she's finally decided to come on and share and open up. Uh, through our sharing, a lot of things were revealed, and I guess without without going into too much detail now, just just know that what you're about to hear. Uh, the conversation and the sharing that that we did that day, it it would have it would have been the same. How do I ex- like it would have been the same conversation that we would have normally had, even if there wasn't a mic in front of us. Uh, it's what what I mean is like it's it's as authentic. And it's as real and it's as raw as it is. And it's not like we plan to share any of these things at that time. Uh, none of this, none of this was, room, room. None of this was rehearsed. None of this was scripted. Um, we just talked that. We just talked like how we always talked. Cause we're friends and cause we're close. And then one thing leads to another. And I think the both of us just felt safe enough to, to share with each other. And it's a little strange to, to, it's a little bit strange to have it all out in the open like this. Uh, and like for the people who, who know us, certain things might start to make a little bit more sense to you. Uh, I mean, and if you, and if you don't know us, if you're a stranger, you don't know who I am, you don't know who she is, maybe after this episode, uh, you might be able to relate. Or not. I don't know. I don't know a lot of things. I'm just a guy talking to myself in my room right now. I don't know what I'm doing. Uh, anyway, just gonna, I'm just gonna put this out. I'm just gonna put it out in the universe and I'm gonna see what happens. So, uh, without further ado, here is Mayan. Enjoy. Okay. <laughs> I'm very scared, I'm very nervous. If you are scared, then what about me? Okay. Hello, Mayan. Um, we've been trying to do this for a very long time, <laughs> very very long time, and here we are. We finally managed to meet in this space, your home, and we've come, like both of us, we've come so far mm-hmm. as friends, as student, then friend. Then colleague, and then demoted to friend again. Demoted, demoted <laughs> friend again, but then like okay, steady, steady friend. Mm. Um, yeah, I wanted to do this with you a long time. You were one of the inspirations for me to even start this potty, and you were supposed to be like episode one, you know. But then now it's like twenty episodes in, so like we're finally here, you know. You have made a name for yourself. You have grown from what two, three years ago when we first met till now in your position in YM and a lot has happened and it's a nice sort of um, a nice little for me as well to like because not many people know this but you were you when I first started when I first bought my equipment you were my first podcast guest and then from that from that episode which was never published sort of till now it feels like a full circle kind of thing where back then I was asking you questions about like how to Oh, how, how, what should I take my TT mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and then like tell now, them how long that first episode was I think it was like three years ago three years ago maybe no, how long that episode was oh it was like three and a half hours <laughs> which I feel like this one today's one could be as long or so you know what? because we, we uh, I, got, I got nowhere to be <laughs> um, that was four years ago you know mm, almost almost four years ago before b- back when I was just a student yeah back when I was just a student and then I when I went to your class, when Jamie brought me to your mm-hmm, class, mm. I was still new. I was still new, mm-hmm. very new as a student. And then, and then look at you now. <laughs> <laughs> Making waves. Yeah. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I was very nervous to come here, not to talk to you, but because mm. I wanted this episode to be very... Like I wanted to make the most out of this episode because of 
who you are and our relationship, our mm. dynamic. And I was thinking a lot about it just now at Yaku, and I was just like, okay, what, what magical questions can I ask? What can I prepare? What can I do? And then you, I think you told me just to keep it organic. Like how yeah. I've always intended this podcast to be, just flowing, just talking. So I was like, okay. Mm. So I came here with an open mind and an open heart <laughs> and to just see how things go. And I have like one or two questions. And these questions are just generic questions just to lead into mm-hmm, yoga. Yeah. But then I would trust that our conversation and our relationship will just create something special. Yeah, I feel like a big part about why I was so uh, hesitant and nervous to come onto your podcast is you mm-hmm. had so many amazing guests. And then uh, after, after a while, I just got... I, I just got more and more nervous that like even more would be riding on this episode because of our relationship because we are because we are close because I was your first uh, guest and then you also tell me a lot of people want to hear you on the on the podcast you know when are you going to come and uh, it's it's kind of comforting to hear that you are also nervous because you also feel like you want to ask me magical questions mm-hmm. and I want to give you magical answers also and then I'm I'm just kind of worried that uh, this won't really live up to what we expect it to be but I feel like we should just. Uh, set the ground rule for ourselves mm. that most of the time when we have organic conversations they're already pretty magical mm. you know and then we would and then we would uh, straight away stop and say ah yeah you see I wish this I wish we had recorded mm. this like this should be on the podcast episode right yeah. so I, I don't see why today should be any different we're just going to mm. yeah we're just gonna keep it uh, organic and trust that mm. the magic will happen on its own yeah I like that so don't be nervous I feel a bit more comforted now yeah I mean like the 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 like the guests, some of the guests that I have on, they are people that I know and also people that I don't know. Mm. So the people that I know, oh, all right, like I can chat with them. It's easy to have conversations. The people that I don't know, I need to be a bit more composed. I need to prepare a little bit more. Mm, right. But then I know you. You're my friend. Like there's no there's no front that I need to put up. There's no like I need to I don't need to switch anything on. I just I'm just here. Mm-hmm. So then it's easier, but then I also still want to, I don't want to end up just talking about whatever we talk about and then like there was no direction. So then mm. what was my intention? So then I, the intention was to just keep it an open mind and just try and reveal or help the listeners, like the people of podcast land mm. to learn more about you in the most natural way. And I feel that honors my space and it honors your space. Mm. Mm. Hello, people from Podcast Land. (laughs) (laughs) You want to give a bit of an introduction about who you are, where you're from, Mm -hmm. what you do? Okay, so um, I started teaching yoga. This is Maya, by the way, if anybody (laughs) (laughs) didn't know who she was. It's me. (laughs) Yeah, so I started teaching yoga uh, four years ago, almost four years. So uh, Boxing Day this year will mark the fourth year. Mm. Um, And I started as a full-timer. About three years in, I also became uh, one of the teacher trainers on the YMTT program. So our in-house teacher training program, I teach at Yoga Movement. Did I say that? Yeah, <laughs> yeah I teach at Yoga Movement. Um, and then, yeah, around that, around that three-year mark, I also uh, was given the opportunity to manage and mentor a team of teachers, which started with about 15 to 17 teachers, and now I'm managing about 26, mm. 27 teachers. Yeah. So currently, I'm a teacher manager at Yoga Movement, um, teaching a lot less classes than I used to when I was teaching full-time. That was maybe between 18 and 20. So when I first did the transition to uh, management, a lot of a lot of students messaged me and they were like, hey, do you quit YM? I oh, cannot find yeah. you on the schedule. Yeah, so um, it was it was quite a transition because I have to switch my thinking cap and it's not just about teaching the students. Now I have to teach uh, teacher teachers. trainees and yeah. I teach teachers. But I feel like I've been very blessed with the opportunities that have come my way and it's still consistently pushing me out of my, of my comfort zone. Mm. Yeah, but... Um, I mean, before before the four years, um, I was also a, a corporate rat. <laughs> uh, we talked about this in your first podcast. Yeah, so I, I worked in an office for maybe about four years and then I just felt like along the way, there's something else that I want to be doing with my life. So I took a very uh, calculated leap of faith 
it was a very calculated leap of faith. Mm-hmm. I thought about it for, for one year, did all the math and then did a slow transition, taught part-time in a small company first and then I jumped into YM. Yeah, and now four years later, here I am. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Along the way, I've picked up a, a, a lot of uh, hobbies that I've also turned into jobs. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, one of them was... Um, being a part-time florist so there was a period of time there were just a lot of uh, pictures of flowers on my Instagram everybody was like what are you doing you're buying flowers every week and I was like no I actually work for a florist uh, and then I also picked up uh, diving which we talked about in your first podcast as well and I was a, sharing yeah. how afraid I was uh, in, in, because I'm such a water baby but I don't know why I was so anxious about uh, about actually going underwater mm. and yeah I was, I was nervous about it um, but now here I am as well yeah, so which door do you want to open first? There are so many things to talk about. <laughs> I mean, the diving thing, I remember it very, very vividly mm. because it was something that we talked about in the first, first podcast long, long ago, back when it was called The Aaron Show. <laughs> was because only I didn't one have a episode. name. And it was only one episode, which is you. <laughs> but then in that episode, you I think it was before you went on your first... Uh, what do you call that? What did, what's that called? Open diving, water. Open water. It was my first certification. Yeah. So before you went or after you went? Before. Yeah? Before. before. And then yeah. you were sharing with me it, okay, this is the thing that's going to happen soon and mm. you're feeling a bit anxious about it because of blah, blah, blah. Mm. And then I was just like, yeah, I did it. It was fine. Eh, you know, I was just mm. like saying it. And then, and then like, that puts things into a bit, a bit of perspective because like this was something that happened so long ago and I can sort of remember that conversation. And here we are now and look how far you've grown from, uh, I, I scared. Mm. And then now I'm fucking, I'm like you're part of the, like you're, you've created this dive company yeah. slash whatever, right? Yeah, yeah. Wow. <laughs> That's like really like from the seed you plant and then you grow into the tree yeah, kind of thing. Yeah. But it wasn't an easy journey. Mm. It wasn't an easy journey. My first uh, experience underwater. So, so okay, for those of you who don't um, uh, dive not, or not quite sure what the syllabus is like, there's a pool session which is mm. in like, you know, in controlled, in a controlled environment. So it's just in the water of which I'm very comfortable in because I... I swam uh, in my tertiary for, for she my... Was, you were so a life... I was a lifeguard. I was a lifeguard. And then uh, I was a lifeguard. It was one of my part-time jobs. I was a lifeguard and then I swam competitively. So mm. I went into the pool and I was like, this my home. You know, mm. I, I was very comfortable there. But the, the different thing is that the pool wasn't deep. So I didn't actually need to practice uh, equalizing. Ah. Yeah, so as the depth changes, then there's pressure in the ears and you need to equalize so that you can go deeper. So I didn't actually practice that and I, for the life of me, did not even think that it was going to be right. one of the biggest challenges that I had to overcome. So um, it, I did super well in the in the pool session. Everything was, was so comfortable, can take off my mask, no problem, still keep breathing through the regulator. But when we went on the, on the first dive in Tioman, um, I think I was maybe about 20 minutes in and... I was diving with this pain in my ear and I was just like, I'm sure everybody else is also diving with a pain in their ear, which is not the case. Okay, guys, you should never be diving with a pain in your ear. Mm. So um, apparently one, only one ear had equalized and the other one was still uh, uh. Yeah, stuck. <clears throat> and so I had stayed at that, um, that imbalanced state for too long. And then uh, this wave of giddiness hit me, which later I found out to be vertigo. So I'm spinning at one rate and then my surroundings are spinning at another rate. Mm. So that was that was the um, terrifying start to my experience as a diver. Yeah, and then I, I just had to keep uh, getting used to it. And that first day of diving, we did three dives and I had vertical on all three dives. Mm, I remember this. Yeah, yeah. So I, I was kind of like uh, tearfully asking my dive instructor, will I still pass mm. if I continue like this? And I was so afraid. And and on the boat right back, I, I started tearing in the mm. boat because I was telling myself, you know, um, so many of my friends call me mermaid. I feel like this is such mm. a big part of me. You know, I love the sea so much. What if this is not something that comes naturally to me? Like, I felt like I was questioning who I am mm. as a person. Like, I thought I would be so good at this. I thought this was going to be another thing that I am going to be passionate about. So I was questioning a lot of that. And then, um, I, I I slept really early that night and the next day I woke up before anyone else did. I did a little bit of yoga. Mm. Yeah, so I woke up early. I did like 15 minutes of alternate nostril breathing and uh, meditated for a little bit, moved a little bit and uh, the nasal passage was a little bit clearer. Mm-hmm. So I calmed myself down. I, I went in with a 
with a fresh mind and I told myself just give yourself a chance you know if it doesn't work out for you it doesn't change who you are as a person mm. maybe it's just you need to um, explore these passions in another spot you know it's not mm. going to define you so I kind of took the pressure off that and then everything went well everything went okay so now that's kind of um, created a uh, almost like a routine for me. It's like a it's like a like tradition a now. Yeah. <clears throat> so before any dive, always uh, ten to fifteen minutes off alternate nosh yoga. Nadi shudana. Mm, nadi shudana. Mm. Yeah. So now all my dive friends who go with me, they recognize it. They are like, oh, when Maya closes her eyes and her fingers are touching her nose, just don't go and talk to her. Mm. Yeah. So That's and it's nice, helped yeah. so far. Um, but unfortunately, through the rest of the of the journey, it's not that it didn't happen again. So I actually went to an ENT specialist, and he identified there's that there's negative pressure in one of my ears. So I will always find uh, equalizing a challenge. Mm. So it just means that I need to descend a lot uh, slower. But it can be really uh, anxiety inducing when it hits underwater. And um, so for those who don't know, I continued uh, and took my advanced certification and then my rescue certification and now I'm a dive master. Yeah. Yeah, but a dive master means that I'm leading other people underwater. So as long as there is this risk of, of this happening, I have to really manage it uh, because properly. Because people are yeah, responsible for I'm people. I'm responsible uh. for people, yeah. So when I was in the middle of the course and, and, and it hit, I, I was... I wasn't in the middle of a course, I was on a le- leisure dive, I think. So it hit while I was still in the middle of my dive master training. And then I was wondering whether it's a sign that I need to pull out of the course because um, I, if I can't fix this problem, I'm not going to be responsible for other people while I still have this problem, right? So I thought about it for really long, spoke to a few people, and they said, you know, then this is the best time for you to just kind of work it out when you're on the when you're mm, in the course you right. know, it's, it's not like you need to drop out of it halfway mm. and I got reminded of this uh, advice very recently when I knew when I, was, you, I yeah, knew you were going to link this there. yeah okay. I just I just like I really I, I was considering dropping out of the course because I was like I don't think I'm made for this right. but you can still try your best to complete the course and what you do with it after that is, is up to you if mm. you feel like you know I'm not cut out for teaching then you just don't teach but mm. But nobody says you can't complete the course, right? Mm. So in our most recent batch, one of our teacher trainees actually had a, a pretty bad anxiety attack during his uh, one-hour teaching practice. Mm. And at the 20-minute mark, he turned around and he told me, I, I don't think I can continue, me and I can't. And so I asked him to put everybody in child's pose. Mm. And I went over to him and I told him, you can stop now, but then I don't know if that will give you the courage to ever come back to this again. So now when you're in this environment where all your classmates are so loving and so supportive, just use this as an opportunity to make mistakes. Mm. While you're still in this learning phase, just use this opportunity to make mistakes. And he stopped maybe like two, three more times, but he completed it. Mm. And it was it was so nice. At the end of it, all his classmates just came to him and surrounded him like with hugs and pats on the back. And uh, I can tell you this now because uh, we just finished his exam on Saturday. He did great. Yeah, he did great. So when he was when he was uh, teaching just like a 20-minute sequence, I was like, I am so glad I did not mm. let you stop in that 60-minute mark. I was questioning myself every second. I was like, if he starts hyperventilating and I need to do like CPR yeah. on him, I'm really gonna, it's really going to haunt me for life. But I felt like he could. So I, I was firm with him, but I still had to be to be uh, gentle. I felt like I really didn't want him to stop. And after the course, he told me, I'm so glad you didn't let me stop. Yeah, because it's, it's easy to quit when things get difficult. But yeah, I just I just told myself, I feel like I just want to try and complete this course. So yeah, this uh, to digress a little bit, we'll talk about that more <laughs> later. But um, I'm glad I still stuck with it and I and I continue. And the funny thing is, I've never gotten a vertigo attack when I was on a training. So when I am looking out for people, I have never gotten that attack. I don't know whether it's a, I don't know whether it's a subconscious thing where I know that, um, you know, I need to, I need, I'm responsible for these people. I better get my shit together. Yeah, and I figured out ways that I can handle it. And when I know that it's about to hit, I know how to to manage it. Yeah, so I'm just really glad that I didn't stop halfway. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Um, that's, you know, when you said that story, you, you told me that story before recently. Uh, I mean, like when it happened on that day. And then when you told me that story, and even you telling it to me now, it's, I feel chills. Not, not, mm. 
not like ooh, uh, but it's a very like um. I remember that that stage. How scary that, that yeah, was, right? Yeah. It was a like when I, and I and I related it back to how our my little poolside session with you. <laughs> Fucking hell! Ugh. Like, like that that um, for context, it was like the first time I ever mocked someone. Like after my TT, I came back because I did my TT in uh, in Thailand. And when I came back and I was hanging out with you, at the, we went swimming at your condo and then mm. we, we were just fucking around at the pool, right? Mm. And then, uh, I think I was like, okay, uh, I want to mock, but like, I am not prepared or what. And then you were, just, you were just, just like, just mock me now, just teach me something now. I was like, mm. I don't want. <laughs> yeah, you were I so stubborn. Want. You were like, no, I, I got no sequence. I got I'm not ready. And I'm like, I give you the sequence. You mm. just teach me. So you just, you just, just tell forced me, you to do it. it. <laughs> and I hated it. I, a part of me hated you for it I because know, I, I like, why why are you making me go through this? Like this is a very vulnerable thing for me, mm. and now you're like embarrassing me because I don't know what I'm doing. I told you I'm not prepared, mm. but then you told me to do it, and I was just like queuing you, and then you were you were you know doing what I was telling you to do, but then you also like, you weren't like judging me when you were in the post, but I was just in my own torment of like, oh no, I'm making her hold too long. Oh no, she doesn't understand me. And then it was just a revealing thing for me to re- to like, oh, well, I clearly don't know what I'm doing. I need to fucking get my shit together. Mm. So that was like a nice little wake up call. But it was in a, and I felt very anxious, but it was, it was like a, see, you, you think you know, right? But you don't know. So it was very humbling ex- mm. exercise. Mm. And then that scared me to the, to the point of action. So I gotta, I gotta fucking study. I gotta learn what I need to do. I gotta go and research and write down and prepare for my mocha. So then, that poolside was a terrible thing. I hated it. <laughs> but then I'm, I was thankful for you to have pushed me through at that stage. So, so that 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 story of the recent the guy mm. who was going through that, you could have easily just said, oh, it's okay, never mind, take a break, or uh, uh, just stop. Okay, everybody, uh, okay, never mind. He he needs to to breathe or whatever. Mm. But then you were like, no, continue. Yeah. And he's like, mm, I couldn't okay. like I, I was just sitting at, at the side and then I and and he he really looked like visibly mm. he was hyperventilating. Of course, he started I mean, to tear. Yeah. So I went next to him, I sat on his mat with him and then I asked him to put everybody in child's pose. Yeah. I didn't address the his class, class yeah. once. You sort of this like, is yeah. your class, right. you take care of them. So mm. if you can't continue, you don't tell me. Yeah. You tell them and right. you are responsible for them for 60 minutes. So that was the responsibility that I wanted him to keep. And so he put them in child's pose. And it was maybe a good um, one or two minutes. Mm. And I just I just stayed beside him because I was I was genuinely worried that he was going to like uh, hyperventilate even more. It like, got, got worse. So I was closely monitoring the situation. But um, this this group of batchmates that he had they, they were so encouraging, you know. Mm. You know, sometimes if, uh, as a teacher, I'm sure you've experienced this, mm. if we happen to forget something that we did on one side or for a moment we just kind of, um, uh, what cue do I need to use to get you here? And you're just like hesitating for a while. You have some students look up and kind of give you that knowing like, are you kidding me? Mm. Face, you know. But none of them did that to him. They just kind of looked at him and he was, and they, they could see that he was struggling to find the words. And, and they spoke to him. They were like, show us, you know, show us what you want us to do. Mm-hmm. And so he, he demoed, but he, he was shaking. So it, it didn't really work out well. And there was a point he left them lying on their bellies for a while. And, and he apologized to them. He was like, I'm so sorry, guys. And and they were so good natured. They were like, no, we're having a lovely time. Like mm. just lying on the belly because it was a core class and yeah. he had almost killed them with a lot of reps. Like it was a super creative sequence. It's, mm. It was entirely, uh, entirely stage fright, I think. Yeah. Mm. So the first time you stand in front of a room with like 18. Let's talk yeah, about 18, this. Yeah. yeah. 18 people, 20 people in front of you. It's really, it can, it can be really, really scary. Mm. So... Um, but but he but he made it through and I'm I'm so glad he he passed and he did he did really well. What are some yeah. of the like say, teaching is one thing like, like say teaching is just one aspect of it. You you never really learn about how to manage the space, how to hold mm-hmm. that space, how to mm-hmm. manage the room. Um, standing in front of your five of your friends versus standing in front of forty strangers that's a different mm-hmm. feeling. Yeah. You know. How did you how did you feel the first time that sort of like when you were aware that oh shit these are 40s paying customers mm-hmm. coming to, to 
got a my class like, huh I'm yeah, just a, yeah. I just graduated like last week right. so how did that feel and how did you overcome that eventually yeah that was um that's always a funny story to tell because my previous teaching experience was um uh, for an outdoor fitness company so most of the the classes that I taught had been outdoor and maybe ranging between like five to ten people on a good day yeah so there was always a lot of space for me to move around I never really felt like I had a lot of eyes on me because it was always quite a big still space. yoga is it still yoga yeah. yeah still yoga so um, this was what I was doing part-time before I decided whether I wanted to leap into the full-time mm. uh, yoga teacher thing so that was the experience that I had and um, when Selena gave me my first class, Selena was my teacher manager then, she gave me my first class, she was like, okay, I'll just give you an off-peak uh, class oh, time. I, mean, I noticed. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll just give you an off-peak class time so that you don't, uh, so, so you can ease into it a little bit. So I'll just give you a Monday 4pm. Hmm. Yeah, so closer to the date, I uh, I had access to uh, Mind Body. We were using Mind Body back then. So I had access to the back end. I can see how many students are booked in. And then I realized that that Monday was a boxing day. So it happened to be, I think it was a spillover public holiday or something, or most people take leave on that day anyway. So then I told Selena, I was like, uh, isn't, it a, isn't it a semi-public holiday? And she was like, oh yeah, whoops. <laughs> 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 yeah, so from like five people in an outdoor class, I had, I think, 20-odd people in my first class. Mm. Um which included Selena herself, mm. Alicia, our the the founder of Yoga Movement, <laughs> the big boss. <laughs> yeah, Alicia, and I think um two other two other teachers and uh two other Freddie, teachers. two other teachers. Oh, Freddie was there. Ah, Freddie was there as well. Freddie, yeah, oh, two other yeah, teachers. Okay. Gabby was there. I can't remember who was the last teacher. Oh, it might have been a front desk. Okay. Uh, Sheena, I think. Yeah. Wow, so yeah. Sheena. So Sheena and uh and and Freddie. So before that, my experience had been teaching uh mostly beginner yogis. Huh. So imagine my panic when I was teaching Anjani Asana, just low lunch, and mm. Freddie just casually reached his arms back and hold on to his foot. I'm like, what? <laughs> yeah. And it was so so the studio um we packed lots of lots of mats in, mm. and it was it was really crowded. So I could only move when everybody was in downward facing dog, and I was so I was actually really nervous. And um, Alicia tried to comfort me before I went in for the class. She said, if at any point in time you feel like you can't continue, you can just tap on one of our mats and one of us can take over. And I was like, do people do that? <laughs> I love that idea though. It's yeah. such a nice safety net. Yeah, it, it's a nice safety net, but it made me even more anxious. Yeah. I was like, is that likely to happen? Am I going to yeah. lose my cool? Because I guess they know that this, this kind of shit can happen. Now, it can, right? it yeah. can, yeah. So then she said, uh, no, nobody's actually done it, but it's an option mm. for you. So know that you have that, yeah. okay? Then, then I was like, okay, yeah. Uh, thankfully, I didn't need to tap on her mat. But uh, I, I was really intimidated standing at the front of the room. So I just moved to the back of the room. Oh, yeah. yeah I that's moved what to the do. back of the room. Yeah. Yeah. So, so that was just something that happened on the first class. And I was just like, I feel really uncomfortable standing at the front with right. everybody looking at me. So I moved around. I moved around. And when I realized I had no space to move around, then I just stood at the back of the room. Right, so, right. so actually now this is a tip that I give a lot of teachers. And, uh, not because they will be stressed that a lot of people are looking at them. Um, but for the, for the teachers who have the habit of uh, demoing a lot and ah. pacing up and down. yeah. So I always tell them, just teach from the back of the room. Right. That's what I do. Um, another reason that I, that I tend to do that is because much of my practice was in a studio that had no mirrors. Mm. Yeah, outdoor so uh, outdoor. Uh, so so that was when I was teaching. But when I was practicing my regular practice, uh, when I practiced at uh, Lava. Lava Yoga back then, yeah, they had no mirrors in the studio. So much of my practice, I was just very used to just being on my mm. own on my mat. So honestly, when I first started teaching at YM, uh, it that was something for me to get used to, to always just realizing that there's mirrors there, and I would, I I kind of. After four years of teaching in a studio with mirrors, I mean, now I know how to manage it a little bit better. But the first two or three years of my teaching, I felt like I was developing a little bit of an aversion to mirrors. So I feel like I've told you about this before, but not in so much um, detail. It's sometimes challenging for me to teach when, you know, that everybody is moving so beautifully and they have a very strong practice and they all look great as well. Um, we all work with self-esteem issues so that is one thing that I've had to deal with as a yoga teacher in anything if, if anything it's kind of made me um, 
have to face my truth even more. So some days it feels like every day is like a swimming pool mock day. You know, every day I'm kind of mm. facing up with it. Yeah, because um, in my own like daily life, I seldom stop and look at myself in the mirror because it's always just an opportunity for me to pick out a lot of flaws about myself. I feel so naked now. <laughs> yeah, but um, so that's one thing that I found um, challenging when I first started is, is that I would, there would be many moments in the class when I was teaching and I would look at, at myself in the mirrors and, and I would just be picking up my flaws and I felt like a fraud at times because I'm supposed to be there and present for my students but I'm using it as an opportunity to just slam myself down. Mm. Not even half an hour in and you're making me tear already. <laughs> yeah, so, um, I mean, I found fun ways to kind of to kind of steer attention away from that. Mm. I, uh, students who come to my classes in like my early days know that I like to teach mandala flows mm. where I get everyone to turn around. So, um, every time I, I tell my students um, at the end of class to leave behind the reflections that they see and to just focus on what's inside, I'm telling them as much as I'm telling myself. Mm. It's mm. a it's a very revealing thing because mm. I, I I just like how you have your own issues to deal with. I mm-hmm. have my own issues, and mm. and we've shared this before in the most in our most recent meetup at mm. that 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 Chao Fan place mm. where the the act of teaching forces us to face our own whatever what do you want to call this um vulnerabilities yeah, yeah. because. I've always thought about it in a way where like you can't teach from a place of not knowing. Mm. You have to teach yeah. like you whatever I preach. It can't be like, all right, hey, um, do good things and be a good person. Or, Namaste, Om Shanti Shanti, mm. and then like you go out and you and you be a fucker outside mm. of the mm. land. Yeah. So then, through the practice itself and through the teaching, and because we are teachers, we are able to tune into that more often than say regular practitioners. Mm. Because you're now teaching, it's a different role now. So then the more we immerse ourselves into this world of yoga, the more we understand about what the the more what the values are. Mm. The the your yamas, your niyamas, yeah. and all these things yeah. that start to play a part in the teaching. Mm. So then when you're aware of it, through the awareness, through the physical body's awareness, you start to be aware of your thoughts, your insecurities, your your samskaras. The more you're aware of it, then the more there is now a time for action where you need to change or you need to improve. Mm. So then, say mirrors are something that that ref- that that affect you, and it's not the mirror itself; it's not the the piece of glass. Yeah, it is the 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 self doubt or the yeah. the whatever, right? Mm. So then, when you tap into that, then you realize why. Okay, then how can I overcome this? And what can you preach in your class, which you always do? Don't look at the mirrors. Uh, mm. tune in words blah 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 that's what you say mm. you stand behind the class you spin around because you want them to not face the mirrors mm. so all these things are subtle but it is your way of honouring that aspect of yourself mm. just like how for me and I don't know whether students know this about my classes but like I value freedom right mm. so then my classes are all about yeah. being free to express mm. Take option one, two, three, four, five. Do what you want to do. Mm. People are up, people are down, people are left, people are right. And I like to hold that space of just doing what you want to do mm. and moving in your in the way that you want to move. So then, because I value that and I teach that in the class and then people have the chance to express it in that way. You but did then, it so well, you know. It was so nice when I went to your class. And yeah, I was, I was sharing with Aaron on another day that... Um, when attending classes is part of your job scope, it's mm. really difficult to practice for yourself. Mm. Yeah, so I had been feeling disconnected from my practice for a while, and then I went for his class, mm. <laughs> your class. Yeah, and so like two two weeks ago, I think. Two weeks ago, yeah, and it was it was so nice to just feel connected to my to my breath again, to my practice, to my mat, to go somewhere where nobody knows me. Mm. And just listen just to another teacher. Again, yeah, yeah, to just be a student again. Because I get it sometimes, yeah. like you, you at YM, you're not just the, the uh, another teacher going to another teacher's class. Yeah. You're like the teacher manager. Yeah. So, so if you go in, then it, you're gonna like affect the vibes of the teacher. Oh no, mm-hmm. I need to teach in a certain way. Mm-hmm. I need to 
show like you know I'm being um I'm being QC let's say mm-hmm. or, or students with oh hey Mia is next to me or whatever so yeah. it's a bit weird oh, it's just different it's different yeah it's different it doesn't yeah. feel like my practice you, you feel, you it don't feels feel, like my job yeah. yeah so then it happens to everybody where like mm. that's why people move around yeah, people yeah. like oh, okay what's the culture like at this studio who's this mm-hmm. teacher like being like a just a straight just another student mm-hmm. going into class you know then and that's sacred already right? you have your own space no one's mm. gonna like it's how was class or like no one's gonna talk to you you just go practice it out which is it's 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 what you what you fell in love with the practice at the start when you first went to yoga like oh yeah. this is how it is you know so yeah that's interesting mm. um, so important to always have moments like that you know mm. to to connect back to your practice or if you feel like there's something missing something that's not quite right mm. and then you just keep I like to go back to my roots mm. yeah I like to go back to where I first took my teacher training or I like to just go to another friend's class or somewhere else. Yeah, it's it's important, I feel, to still be practicing for you to be able to offer uh, insights to someone else's practice authentically. Yeah. Of course, I feel like there's there's no... I, I can't think of a way where you can still teach or evolve your teaching without practicing. Without practicing, How is that, yeah, that's yeah. Not possible, I don't think it's possible. Yeah, it's yeah. not possible. I don't think it's possible. Self-practice, maybe, but then... I mean, okay, maybe some practice can. Possibly because... Possibly, possibly. but I feel like there's still an aspect that you can you further to, yeah. grow if you go and learn from someone. Yeah. And and one of the things that I love sharing in uh, in teacher training when I'm teaching the future uh, teachers either at YM or whichever other studio mm. they go to um, is the Om Sahana Vavatu chant. Mm. Yeah, because it, it um, we, we kind of we kind of do it at the start and, and end of any theory sharing session, but yeah. I always remind them that it's important to remember that you are a student as well and everyone has something student to learn from each other. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's to create a space of conduciveness between right. the student and the teacher. So um, the Sanskrit words translate to uh, may the teacher and the taught be uh, respected and learn from each other with good energy may they never hate each other stuff like that um, and I always do that to remind them that they want to respect not just me while I'm teaching them but each other when whenever they end up doing their own uh, practice teaching and even after they become teachers to go to to go to uh, another studio or another teacher's class and not roll their eyes at that teacher mm. when the teacher forgets something. Because sometimes mm. we can be really impatient and uh, we don't want to enter that um, assumption that now I am a teacher so I know everything. Mm. You know, it's it's great for those who feel like, you know, they, they see um, the end goal of their journey, but I don't. You know, there's, there's, no, there's no end. There's no, there's that's no not end. supposed to be an end. That's not supposed to be an end. Yeah. And... What what you just said? I, I am the teacher, so I know everything. Yes, that's that yeah. Mindset, yeah, like that. Because you're someone who is teaching, you will assume that you have that power. Like I know that's why you must listen to me. Mm. But because you know, or okay, how do I say this? The more you know, the more you don't know. That is the that the is the more truth. you know, the more you will realize that there you, is so, there's much so much more, more to know. That's you why don't you don't yet. know, and that yeah. and in that process, it's humbling. Mm. Therefore, like, how can I go around saying that I know because I did not, I don't know, right? Mm-hmm. But then for you to go there and say like, yeah, I know, I know everything, then that means you don't know, you mm-hmm. know, that that that's the 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 fallacy of it. Like mm-hmm. you think you know, but you don't know. And I and I, I guess like when I first did my TT, I I came into the TT, I went into my first TT thinking that I I know a lot about yoga, and mm-hmm. I left realizing that I know nothing about yoga. Mm-hmm. I don't know how to teach. I don't know how to cue. What is this eight limbs? What is this, whatever, mm-hmm. the philosophy of it. Oh, I don't understand. Because I think, I went in thinking like, yeah, I know how a chaturanga is supposed to look like. I know how to do a triangle. Mm-hmm. I know how to do warrior two. The very fact that you think that you know how to do a pose shows how much, you, how little you know about a pose because mm-hmm. there is no right or wrong way to express that pose. The pose mm-hmm is your own expression of it. Yeah, and there are so many different schools of thought, yeah. you know, uh, palms together or, or knees, biceps by the yeah. ears, knees behind the ankles, knees beyond the toes, Drishti, you know. Yeah. eyes closed. There's yeah. so many ways to do it. Knees yeah. must be 90 degrees, knees mm. gently bent. There's so many ways and there's so many schools of thought and dogma behind how a pose is supposed to look like. Mm. But then I, th- I, I think like we can both agree that the true yoga comes from its own expression. Mm-mm. And and that's that in because of that you don't limit people from coming to yoga 
Yeah. Because like say the person who's overweight or the person who has an uh, injury, I can't do this, I can't do that. Mm, mm. But you can still come. Like you can still come and express it in your own way. Yeah, yeah. Right? Um, Every body is a yoga body. Mm, <laughs> that's nice. Yeah, I love that. Um, mm. I felt like we digressed for a bit. Did we... We were talking about uh, difficulties when oh, the holding we start space teaching, yes, holding yes, space. Okay. The things that we don't learn in our teacher training. Mm. You know, we, we learn how to teach, but there are a lot of other things that we don't uh, uh, learn or think about. Yeah, so... Uh, yeah, I think that was one of the, the uh, anxieties that I had when I first started teaching. Um, another one was, which I'm sure a lot of new teachers will face, is I feel like my physical practice might limit my teaching. So that was, Ooh. yeah, that's always something that a lot of us face. I can't do the handstand, so mm. I can't teach the handstand. Yeah, yeah, you know, so um, I can't, I, I'm pretty sure I've told you this uh, story before, but one of the first few uh, internal trainings that I attended when I was at YM um, was, uh, I think it was, uh, it was called leading up to peak poses or something like that. This is such a thing. Uh. Yeah, so this was this was uh, back when we did a lot of internal trainings. We would mm. have Zen trainings. We would have uh, leading up to peak poses, adjustments, stuff like that. Mm. Yeah, so I happened to attend one um, where the teachers would just kind of come together and share their their ways of leading up to peak poses. And we had a lot this of before strong... Before my time. Before right? your time, yeah. yeah. So... Uh, I think after your time, maybe you'll need uh, adjustments. I remember going once. Yeah, the one, uh, adjustments uh, and then mandala yeah, training or maybe, something. Yeah, maybe. so this was this was before you joined. Mm. Um, and we had a lot of strong teachers in there. And they were all talking about how to build up to uh, Kondinyasana 2, Kondinyasana mm. 1, uh, Crow to Tripod, all the advanced things. Mm. And and I was the I was the country bumpkin asking, what is Kondinyasana 2? <laughs> I didn't know what mm. that was and I didn't have as strong a physical practice as the rest of the teachers um, and I feel like at the start that was my limiting belief I would keep mm. telling myself uh, I can't do this students have nothing to learn from me if I, if I don't know how to do this but then along the way um, I feel like my perspective shifted but this was my this was my first uh this was my first realization that I really have uh, a, a different understanding of yoga from the rest of the YM teachers because when they were doing all the postures and they were all looking, executing it so beautifully, going into it without any warm up, yeah, I felt so overwhelmed uh, in that training. And after that training, everyone was gonna go out and have truffle fries together, and I, I lied and I said that I had something on. And I went to the toilet and I cried. <laughs> it's so stupid. When I told when I told Val this story, she was like, "Me, so stupid, you know." You. She was there in the. Ah, uh, she was in that training. Yeah, she was in that training. So I told her about it. Um, I told her about it a year later, a year after it happened. And she was like, "So stupid, you know. Like you're such a great teacher." And in hindsight, lah. Yeah, in hindsight, and I I'm not saying that my stance has changed. I do acknowledge that I don't have as strong a practice as, don't even need to say my colleagues as some of my uh, students, mm. but I don't want to let that affect um, the impact that I can have on mm. their practice. Maybe I can't do a handstand, maybe I can't do a headstand, but I would like to believe that I can still bring them through a meaningful practice that allows them to connect with their breath, uh, their practice themselves. And I want to be able to give them something else other than just a really complicated physical practice experience. I want them to step off their mat feeling better about themselves and about their practice. I want them to be able to feel safe when I am teaching and I want them to be able to close their eyes when I'm teaching. Mm. Yeah. And I, and so after a while I just felt like this is this is the kind of teacher that I want to be. And slowly different students started gravitating towards my classes. Mm. Um, the people who who can't really go upside down uh, confidently uh, the people who don't really know how to do an arm balance properly, they still come to my classes. They still feel like I can experience this as well. And then along the way, as my practice grows and certain arm balances come into my practice, then now I'm ready to teach them and I can share with them. Right. And I can earnestly tell them, I remember a time when I couldn't do this pose and this is what you want to do to get yourself to that pose. So there are many times when I teach in class and it's not the full expression of the pose and I'll just let them know. I'll say, this is still a work in progress for me, but I found that this helps me experience the full uh, effect of the pose. So I, I want to share that with you guys. And they seem to appreciate it. Mm. Yeah, they seem to appreciate it. I, I guess it's 
I guess it's nice to know that your yoga teacher can't do everything also mm. and then maybe they feel like they connect with me a little bit more. You hold that space for them to make them feel safe because like it's one thing to let's say on the other on the other end of that spectrum is the teacher that can do everything. Mm, so mm. then the students will come like, wow, you can do everything. That's mm, mm, inspiring. Mm. I want to be like yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. So, so that motivates me as a practitioner right. to want to, mm. to achieve that one day. Versus somebody who like, let's say, can't do it, but still doing it, like still mm. expressing it in their own way. And that gives me uh, like, oh, okay. You, I guess I don't have to, um, I don't have to have the six pack or the, uh, the, the yeah, super strong yeah. arms to be able yeah. to do this. So one day I'll be able to do that and you're still trying. Mm. Then that makes me feel safe as well. Mm. So different it's, teachers it's different for different energy. experiences, yeah. I guess. Yeah, that's true, mm. and it makes sense because mm. you you, at least you've found that like that identity in a sort of in a way, you know, like that's mm. your style, that's your, that's your way of conveying the same message, or mm. right? Yeah. Hmm. <laughs> okay. Yeah, but, um, I still felt like I wanted to learn more. Mm. It's just that it. It's just that my teaching and um, the direction that I have taken, I feel like it's steering in a different direction than I thought I would go. But now after years of years of uh, teaching, the things that I've resonated with, I love vinyasa, mm. which is uh, power flow at YM. And I love teaching Zen as well, which uh, is probably what um, other studios would call yin or restorative. Mm. Yeah. So can I tell you about my teacher training oh, yes, that yes. I went for at the start of this year? So this was supposed to be the year that I embarked on my 300-hour teacher training. This was a year that we would have, <laughs> a lot of people had a lot of things planned, but you know, yeah. the universe had other, other, mm. go on. Yeah, can, can you believe we're in the last month of 2020? Uh, we're in the last month of 2020, mm. yeah. So this was supposed to be the year that I embarked on my 300-hour teacher training. Mm. Um, I, I went back to yoga seats for it, so that's where I took my first 200-hour... With uh, Wendy, um, shout with out. With Wendy, yeah. Wendy's great. So... Um, if Wendy's listening to this, which mm. I'm sure she is, knows that I want to speak to her at some point as well. <laughs> yes, you need to have her, man. You need to have her. Yeah, so she's she's been such a big uh, inspiration to my teaching journey as well. And I remember when I first uh, met her, the first thing I asked her was, if I cannot do headstand, I can pass or not. And she said, it's easier for me to teach you how to do a headstand than for me to teach you how to be a good teacher. Ooh. Yeah. It, it, Sign me up. Yeah, it stayed with me <laughs> yeah. until, and it stayed with me until today, you know, because it's, it's such a big, it's such a big uh, uh, impact to hear that from That redefines from your entire yeah, idea purpose, of what it is. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And 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 it's always nice to to go back to a class that feels simple and traditional. Mm. You know, I'm not really going to be doing any uh, super fancy postures. Uh, don't get me wrong, when, when she teaches like an advanced vinyasa, it can be really uh, uh, challenging and complicated. But Sometimes when I just go back uh, to her class for like a sunset flow or like a vinyasa one, it's just really simple stuff like warrior mm. one, warrior two, and and then there's just more focus on being there and being mm. okay with uh, how your body is today. So um, yeah, I took my 200 hour training from her and um, our 300 hour teacher training was kind of structured in three sets of 100 hour modules. As most 300 hours are. They? are. Yeah. Like, like, they I break guess. it up like once yeah, a year yeah. or whatever. Mm -mm -mm. Yeah, so uh, I was I, I did the first uh, set of 100 hour modules at the start of this year. The second one was supposed to be in October but it's been pushed back to next year. Mm. Um, and the first one happened to be uh, Yin 100 hour teacher training and there was a deeper focus on anatomy as well. So... Uh, I'm really glad that Yin was the one that I started with because mm. one of my modules for uh, our own teacher training at, at uh, Yoga Movement is uh, breathing techniques as well as Zen. So that entire day, I'm just kind of talking to them about pranayama and holding space for them and how to teach Zen uh, and leading them through uh, loving-kindness meditation. Mm. So um, one of the reasons why I wanted to take that 300 hour was because I felt like I didn't know enough to share with the future teachers, so the, the teacher trainees. And I feel like they've benefited from this uh, new and improved version of whatever I do in my Zen module because now I, I know and understand Yin a little bit better, mm. which which uh, impacts Zen in a way. And 
it wasn't just about learning how to teach a different class type. It was kind of a redefinition of a lot of the things that I thought I knew about yoga. So in my teacher training, you know, we, we briefly touched on uh, the three gunas. Hmm. Yeah, so um, they are like three sets of... Uh, they are different qualities of energy that hmm. literally anything possesses. So um, the three energies are sattva, rajas, and tamas, right? Hmm. But that may sound a little bit foreign to uh, our friends listening who don't uh, know Sanskrit or are not too familiar with the, with the three gunas. So um, imagine like an apple on a tree in the process of its ripening it's in an active uh, state so it has more uh, dominant rajasic energy mm. which is the more active guna and when it's ripe and and just nice and ready for plucking that's the sattvic Sattva. energy mm. yeah so and then if you don't pluck it and you leave it there then the energy becomes dull and inactive and it becomes over ripe and that's uh, tamasic energy mm. so that's a nice analogy yeah I, mean, I, I really a, yeah, like it okay, I really okay. like it so I think I think I think it's from Wendy. She used the fruit to, to okay, teach us okay. also. Um, but it wasn't until the teacher training that she also used it to describe um, classes. So mm. it's not just it's not just about the anything that we can perceive. It's not just about matter, things that we can touch. It's things that we experience. It's things that... Um, it's, it's, it exists even in the yoga classes that we attend. So... Okay, let's let's try something. Um, close your eyes. Ooh. Okay, close oh, your eyes. Yeah, yeah. Everybody, close your, everybody close your eyes. Everybody close your eyes. Okay, so just <sighs> just close your eyes and visualize um, a really great class that you attended. Okay, it's okay if you can't identify uh, one singular experience, but think about how you felt at the end of a really good practice. It kind of feels like you step off your mat with a renewed mindset. And it doesn't feel like you stepped off your mat after you did a strong workout. It kind of feels like you meditated for 60 minutes. That effect that stays with you for the rest of your day. That effect that kind of discourages you from picking up your phone straight away after class. And you and you have like a lightness in your step as you leave the studio. And you continue the rest of your day kind of with this clear light energy. That is the effect of ending your practice with sattvic energy. Yeah, so just kind of visualize how, how that feels and how nice it is to keep that with you for the rest of that day. And I feel like after I learned about this, this is the energy that I want my students to leave my class with each time they step off the mat. And you can open your eyes. Yeah, did you identify mm. like a particular class? I did. Mm. And it was a recent class that I went to. I mean, like, because last week I was doing my Pancha Kosha immersion with Lee. Mm -hmm. One of the classes that she did was was some like a, a slow flow, which is what I like. Mm -hmm. And it had a lot of options to express because the class... So every day she would team a different class. And then the day before she teamed the class that was that had no downward dog and no vinyasas. So then the wow. question was, can you still flow in a class without being able to flow? Without mm. the flow. If you mm. the flow is the vinyasa. Yeah. You take away the vinyasa, can you still flow? So that was the provocative, challenging mm. class. And I did, I flowed. Mm. I don't know, I can't remember what the sequence was, but we mm. flowed. Then the next class after that, which was the one I thought about, was the one that now it's opposite. You express in everything, mm -mm. every warrior to every pose. What else can you do? And I, I took that. I took it. I, I just moved, not in a way to look how deep I can go into whatever I'm doing, but more of like, an, an opportunity to feel into different variations of that pose. Say warrior two, mm. arms out like that. Just, just static one. But then how can you still express so just like leaning forward and back, mm -hmm. just like maybe just a bit a bit of my at least my fingers behind a bit stretcher yeah. maybe on a bow forward or whatever mm. I just and, and she hold, held that space for us to just move so I like to be I like to move I like to be f I like to be free with my movements mm. and I just took it and it was slow it was mindful it wasn't like jump here jump there you know mm -mm. and then you vinyasa and I once in a while I would vinyasa I would cat cow I would knee chest chin I just do whatever I wanted I just mm. go to down with dog I would just charge pose I just did whatever I wanted to do and I had my eyes closed the whole time I felt like I was napping for mm. the whole two hours mm. and and I after that class 
I felt great. Like any other, you know, like yeah. you feel good after yeah. a good class. Mm. On the flip side, you imagine if there's a uh, like maybe a really challenging class that you went for. Mm. Uh, it's it's not to say that you can't a, ever teach a challenging class right. or like with difficult poses. It's 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 not that. It's just that there has to be. I feel personally, the, there has the to be enough time. Yeah. yeah, there has to be enough time at the start to ground, and there has to be enough time at the end to ground as well. Mm. So the students who leave during shavasana, they are kind of leaving in a rajasic state. You know, so I gotta you go are to work. active. I gotta go to yeah, office. yeah. So you're really uh, active. The body was just moving and you don't really give the body time to return back to a, a state of neutrality. Yeah. yeah, so when you skip Shavasana, you leave straight away. You're leaving in a rajasic state and right. the rest and of you your day just that, feels yeah. really anxious and and uh, everything has to be really rushed and really forced, you know. So you can still teach a challenging class. It's just that you need to give enough time for the rest of the energies as well because if you keep on focusing a lot on the rajasic energy in a practice, your student will just leave your leave the class maybe feeling a bit um, anxious or, or just really tired, you know? And uh, one of the feedback that I got during my yin teacher training was that my class is too tamasic, which is, uh, which is the dull and inactive energy. So I used to take it as a compliment when people right. fell asleep in my zen okay, classes. Okay. They'll be like, oh, go for me in zen class. It's like a really good nap. Mm. And and honestly, when I went for the yin teacher training, I kind of I, I went in feeling quite confident, you know. I I took it upon to myself, uh, thinking that yeah, I know how to teach a Zen class. I'm teaching the Zen module in mm. the teacher training, and then and then to have that all kind of put into question mm. when when Wendy calls to to my memory that there are three gunas and we need to still pay attention to all three qualities of energy regardless of the class right. regardless of whether it's a power flow class or a zen That's class right so uh, I, I would put everybody in very restorative poses and use my uh, lullaby like voice hey. to, <laughs> to kind of put everybody into this nap and dream like state and and then um to still receive feedback uh, after four years of teaching, thinking that I know everything about Zen, it was so humbling and it was so useful because I always wondered, you know, uh, what can I do in my Zen class that will kind of change the experience? Mm. And and she reminded me that we want to finish uh, all classes in a sattvic state. Mm. So it if that means um, introducing some postures that are maybe a little bit uncomfortable, like a lizard pose, you know, I find it challenging. I know it's super comfortable for you, but mm. uh, to postures that maybe uh, challenge your mind's discipline mm. a little bit more where you offer cues not just to feel more comfortable in the shape but sometimes just identifying her. whether you need to move and having the discipline to stay still mm. yeah so the effect that we want uh, them to get after a yin class that was taught well is that sattvic state that clear light uh, light as in luminosity and light as in light as, as light as a feather you know both to have that effect when they step off their mats so they kind of feel like they meditated not right. that they had a, a 60 a nap, minute nap right, yeah. yeah there was this, there was this uh, student in, in East Coast that slept all through after everybody had left and he had the mat that was closest to the door I see <laughs> everybody was walking over yeah. him and then I went over and I tapped his wrist I was like hello hello are you okay <laughs> and then he woke up and he was like oh dear yeah mm, so that was quite it funny happens. yeah so so now when I teach my Zen module I feel like I do it with a refreshed perspective mm. and it's not that you want everybody to have a really good nap you still want that that nice balance of all three <laughs> qualities of energy mm, yeah okay okay yeah so hey, can you imagine I wanted to tell you this from February yeah. <laughs> I was like I have this refreshed perspective on the three gunas and I need to tell you mm. yeah and I'm glad I finally did wow because then I realized like uh, what makes it so different about some teachers classes that I attend when I step off I kind of straight away feel like um, like like my mind has has done the work rather than my body and I set off just always feeling so much better but I don't always have that feeling so maybe it calls into question the use of the qualities of, of energy and now I use that to explain to students also when they wonder what is it about that class that I just I just feel better after I step off it off the mat it's mm. interesting to put a, a name to this like like the yoga glow right mm, or the mm, sattvic yeah, state yeah yeah hmm and you would think that like say, okay, it makes sense to want to find sattvic in a vinyasa class. You, yeah. you, 
you ground, you 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 melt, you start slow, mm. you peak, and then you and then wind you come down back again. Down, yeah. But then for a yin class, yeah. like, you would think it's all just like I would think it's like, there all the time because yeah. it's so grounding already, so relaxing. Th- yeah, you already. would never think to rise the energy. Yeah. But, but we're not saying like oh sweat in a yin class. Yeah, no. We're saying like challenge, challenge and, and challenge that the discipline, mind. Yeah. yeah, like can you still be? Can you still find comfort in the discomfort? Mm. Can you do your your what lizard? Let's say lizard. Mm. It's not super intense, but it's also not super comfortable. Yeah, pigeon, yeah. pigeon, yes, not super yes. comfortable. Just eh. anything that's not too uh, yeah. comfortable. You can't have a full class with like bolsters and pillows. It sounds that's, beautiful. It's restorative. Yeah, yes, it's restorative. That's another thing, right? Then that would then, be a restorative yeah. class already. Yeah, but, but then but you need to challenge. You need yes. You need to like. You're not like. I guess even me, I feel like I just want to make everybody fall asleep. Yeah, right? you wouldn't really think about it, you know. You wouldn't think that there's such a thing yeah. as being too grounded or too relaxed. Mm. But that's what happens when the apple is left there and it's not plucked. Yeah. It just continues ripening. So then it just it, then it becomes dull and yeah. inactive and there's nothing left to do but for then it will start to spoil. Yeah. You know, so just putting too much of that tamasic energy where everybody steps off feeling a little bit lethargic, like you had a nap but then you got woken up early. Mm. Yeah, that kind of effect. Yeah, that's not what uh, it should be like. That's true. So, yeah, so Wendy actually used a Chinese idiom to to describe this. Let's see if I know what it is. Uh, I didn't even know what it was. Um, song er bu san. So let me Explain break it down for you. Let me break it down for you, okay? So song is like relaxed. Uh, song. Uh, and sun is like scattered. scattered. Yeah. So you are soft but not scattered. Right. It's a I, I think she I, I might be wrong, but she told me it's a it's a it's commonly used in the practice of Tai Chi also. Ooh, this concept, right? You are relaxed but you are controlled. Right, right. You know? Yeah. This I I, I mean and this this idea I guess it's interpreted in many different ways in mm, different mm. languages. Uh let's say the song and the scan mm, mm. sun. Yeah. It can be in like um finding balance. Yin yeah. and yang. Yes, right? yes. You 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 can't be too pita, you gotta pacify yeah, it yeah, a bit. Correct. You can't be too l- bright, you gotta have some yeah, darkness. You yeah. can, it, the sun can't be hanging over the yes, yes. The, the world for too long. Correct, You're correct. Up, and you right? know the yin yang symbol, right? Like a we did, of, yeah, yes. there's always a little bit a of, bit of yang darkness within in the, the yin. light, a bit of lightness in yes, the dark. Yeah. yeah. And that is the universal balance. So mm, mm. that's why like as much as it is terrible to have like a someone who's very bad, mm. there's also a, a weirdness to have someone who's very good. Mm. It, let me how, how do I explain? Maybe that's a bad example. I mean, yes, okay, good person is good, but then like yeah. there's no way that you can truly be good. Like no matter how good you are, in your own goodness, you can cause pain. Like say a mother who's too overprotective mm-hmm. will cause pain to the child mm-hmm. because. Mm-hmm. You are. I'm. I'm doing this out of love. I'm taking care of you. Everything you want, I give you. Yeah. But then yeah. in that goodness comes, like you will. You will. There will be restriction. Yeah. There'll be perfectionism. Yeah. You know? So then you're not yeah. helping. So then you need to balance out. Like okay, mm. maybe I need to give. Maybe I need to let you be for a bit. I don't care mm. about you. Just if we if we talk about like uh, flexibility and strengths, mm. right? Somebody who is super super, super bendy. Yeah. yeah. Super super bendy. Go all the way back. Yeah. That's sun. But mm. you are you are not song, There's you no know. Control. So you go all the way back, but then you need to control, and then you right. hold, and then that's where the strength comes in. Balance. So you can't have one without the other. And that's like, and on the opposite, some bulky guy, super strong, yeah, can, yeah, can break no a tree with his hands, right? <laughs> but he can't even touch his toes. Yeah. So then, yeah. what's the point of that? There's no Correct. point of it at all. Well. Yeah. So just having balance in everything, mm. and and I went in thinking that it was gonna be entirely like a yin training, but we talked so much about the yang as well because right. they are two dualities, the right? You can't have one yin, without ooh, the other. Okay. Yeah. In fact, there was this uh, exercise that that she asked us to do just when the training was ending. Um, it was it was to just have a piece of paper, and you write down at the top yin, and then you write down at, on the other side yang. And you list down the activities in your day-to-day life that are yeah, under yin the yin and, yin and under okay. the yang. And as I was doing it, I was kind of like, oh, I wonder why she's making us do this. And then I, I wrote it down. And the yang list is so much longer than the yin. Mm. And, then I, and then I was like, I, I know exactly why she's asking us to do this. You know, on the days that you feel tired and overwhelmed okay. and, 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 and stretched too thin, you know you have a yin and a yang list, but we somehow always make time for the yang and we forget to make time for the yin. Right. So uh, I'll tell you a little bit about, about my list. I realized that I had written down um, attending fellow teachers' classes under yang. Uh. Right? And uh, it wasn't until the rest of my classmates started sharing, oh, my yoga practice is under yin. And I realized I didn't put my oh. yoga practice under yin. 
because it, it was... has become a young for me and that I didn't make time for my own practice and I didn't, didn't even occur to me. I'm in a yoga teacher training and I didn't list my own yoga practice under mm. yin. I had I had go for a 30 minute run with my music blasting very loud and I didn't have my yoga practice. It was such a revealing moment for me, you know. Mm. Then I realized that I have not been making enough time for my own practice. Yeah, and, and so now that I am aware of that, within each day that I have a lot of young, you know, um, uh, work, um, uh, taking care of the teacher's schedules, uh, taking care of the teacher's stuff like that, I also make sure that I try to slot one or two yin inside, you know, going for mm. a 30-minute walk, not using my phone. Mm. Yeah, uh, meditating for just 20 minutes. Okay. Yeah, so we know the things that relax us, but sometimes we don't make enough time for right. it. And then, we'll, and then we'll start to say, oh, I, I'm so tired, I don't feel present, which is why I've put off this um, podcast with you for so long, right? I have not been introducing enough yin into my life. Right. Yeah, when, when things got really overwhelming, you know, there was the... Uh, there was the the wedding in the middle of the pandemic, and then the house renovation and all that. Yeah, let's not even get into that. But yeah, that was that was so. Um, yeah, I was just not making enough time for my own uh, practice or mm. things that calm me down. Yeah, and there needs to be some balance. So there's so much young. Then it was just these things are so just, important, and we don't even yeah. pay attention to it. Mm. Like, uh, I guess like on the opposite side of it, you could be you can be too yin. And then not even like move. Yeah. Like too yeah. static. Like, yeah. Oh, okay. Then there's too Watch much TV like tamasic energy. Then there's whatever, no. Whatever, whatever. Yeah. Like, mm. Mm. Yeah. Balance. So I was just, I was just uh, teaching the new November batch uh, yoga philosophy two mm. days ago. That was on Sunday. Yeah. And we were talking about doshas. Mm. So uh, the so gunas are like the the qualities of energy that exist in other things, right? But doshas are more of like biological energies that exist within us, mm. and um, it helps when you understand like which your predominant right. dosha is. So so I'm um, pita vata. pita kappa. Ooh, kappa now. Yeah, pita kappa. Oh, all along pita kappa. Was it? Yeah, yeah. I've, uh, the the few traits that I have from the vata dosha are like light sleeper and cracking joints. <laughs> that's that's about it. Yeah. So pita is like um very too much heat and then kappa is like uh, very lethargic right? right so one is very grounding one is very active they are two like on two opposite ends right so so i've i've always wondered uh what it is about um a flow class or about running that i always feel better after okay. my my predominant uh like having too much kappa energy within me can make me feel very lethargic and like right. not really want to move anywhere uh-huh. so when i introduce a little bit of rajasic energy into that it kind of balances out right. my, my kappa imbalance yes. but then i also have pita to think about so my pita um my pita just having too much fire yeah, then i still does then I, increase the yeah, fire then i still like to go and spend a lot of time in the sun right. so i'm just yeah. giving myself a lot of rajasic right. energy yeah but so then that's fine like what is like when you did the test, what was your imbalance? Was it pita that was too high? Uh, my pita was my pita was quite high, and then uh, and then my kappa was next. My kappa, but what, my, what, my but vata what was, was the like imbalance? Pita. Um, because if your pita is high, let's say most of the time mm. it's fifty percent, then twenty five, twenty five, right, or whatever, mm, or mm. or whatever. Mm. But then if your pita is fifty percent, but there's no imbalance, then that's fine because that's just your majority. Mm-hmm. Your usually pita, mm. you can you can still go run in the sun and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. But then if it's imbalanced, then then you need to tone it down. You need to drink more coconut water or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I think the imbalance was there was too much heat. Mm, okay. Yeah, I think it was there was too much heat. And then kappa sometimes when I get uh, tired from too much of that, uh, rajasic energy from mm. outside interacting with people, I can just like be kappa the whole week yeah, and yeah. then just not do anything. But I'll but it, I won't feel um, I won't really feel balanced also. So that's just always, yeah. So doing that yin-yang comparison, it just reminded me again mm. the importance of balance. It's like, yeah, it's nice to stay home and, and just uh, clam up for a little bit. But I also need to go out and spend time by myself outside. Nice. Yeah, so I really enjoyed it. I mean, I've been dabbling in the doshas for for quite recently also doing mm-hmm. the, the immersion and like just on my own. Are you entirely vata? I am like 100% vata. <laughs> 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 the whole circle is just blue. <laughs> so yeah. I'm, okay, so I'm very easily cold is the first thing that I want to point out. Okay, we'll be. I'm really like stiffing, uh, and it's just like yeah, it's just a fan. I know. Yeah, I turned down the. I turned down yeah, the. I know, I know, this thing. Yeah. yeah, and and like it was. It's been raining the past few days, so it's yes, just a nice yes. cold weather, lah. Right? Yeah. But I just need to point out uh, our 12, like bus 12 morning rides. Uh, yeah. Sometimes it'll be so hard to find you because you got the windbreaker and then uh, the, hoodie the hoodie on. And then I get onto the bus and I'm like sleepless and, and then I'm like, wow, very hot. Uh. And you're like, oh, I'm freezing uh, already. 
So I'm, I'm Vata predominant. <laughs> yeah. I was Vata Pita maybe a, like really? three months ago. I was Vata Pita. Wow. Okay. I'm Vata okay. Pita. Recently, I did it and I became Vata Kappa. Where, where do you do it? Is it the, the botanical one? Yeah. The botanical okay, yeah, That's right, the most, right. I think it's the most... Most lit, accurate yeah. one. Oh, yeah. So I explained the, the differences. Okay, so mm. Vata Pita was my, my normal. Mm. And... And Let's tell I, them the elements. Okay, Vata oh, okay, is yes. like uh, Vata, Vata is space is and air. A- and ether, yes. Yes, and uh, Pita is fire and water. Fire and water. Mm. Kappa, water and earth. Water and earth. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So then, if you are predom- if you are Vata, you are your body type is a bit more thin. Mm. You're a bit more frail. You're a bit weak. Lanky, we- long, we- arm long, yeah, yeah. L- and you're more weaker frame, mm. inside and outside. So. Mm. So your joints are a bit more cracky. Mm-hmm. Your digestion is not so good. You can't be mm-hmm. eating a lot of mala, that kind of thing, because mm-hmm. it's gonna fuck you up. Mm-hmm. Um, so then there's whole there's a whole line. Of, okay, what Ayurveda terms like what you should eat, what you should not eat, what mm-hmm. you should avoid, blah, blah blah for each of the doshas. Yeah. So then for me, like the L, the the quality of vata is intelligence. So then we think a lot. Our minds are always like we when we and this is why I learned from Lee's dosha mm-hmm. module. When we when we talk, we just talk about we just, there's no the there's no yeah. anchor, there's no direction. Right? Yeah. Like I can just talk about one thing and I link to another thing and link to another yes, thing. Yes, 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 yeah. For Peter's there's more direction. I talk about this, we 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 are we are addressing this, I dress finish, okay mm, the end. Mm. Move on to the next thing. Yeah. So then uh uh I was I was very flighty, I was very mm. cold, I was very like I had oh my, I'm always vata imbalanced because mm-hmm. of say the way I eat or the way I do things. So I mm. I just not grounded. I'm always just thinking a lot. Mm. and talking a lot also in a way doesn't ground me but I like I, I enjoy conversations mm. but then that still stimulates more vata in me yeah, and I was yeah. like I love yeah. it <laughs> so then what grounds me is yoga because I get to be by myself yeah. I get to be on my mat and I just moving meditation I'm like mm. I just I took a nap I just don't think about anything I close my eyes and I just flow mm. it grounds me jujitsu grounds me because it's literally on the ground. I'm <laughs> yeah. On the ground, I feel grounded because I'm touching the earth. Mm. It's close contact. I'm hugging someone. So that 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 is that embrace is is grounding, mm. and I'm thinking in a way it's meditation. So because I'm I'm in a state of flow. How can I survive this 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 particular thing? What can I do? So I'm thinking of the present moment. It brings me to the present moment. So then it's in it in itself jujitsu grounds me, and then when I went to Chiang Mai for my traveling and mm. I was doing jiu-jitsu I felt so grounded because everything was balanced I had my own space mm. I had my freedom to you ex- had nature I had nature mm. I had my routine routine grounds the mm. bata so I woke mm. up I go for jits I come back I get my coffee I, I eat I go out for jits again I come back I watch my YouTube I just chill for a bit next morning rinse and repeat mm. it's very simple don't need to think don't need to make decisions yeah, making decisions so is like the you. worst thing you I can know, ask a bata to do <laughs> Yeah. So then anxious and indecisive. Yeah. And then I felt so safe mm. when I was over there. And then the pandemic pulled me away from that space. Mm. And when I was over there, I was supposed to be there for like a good four months. I was supposed I to come know. back for your, yeah. your wedding. Yeah. Pull back and then like I was back in my own home. And my mm. home you know. Yeah. And then I had no control over that environment. I had no routine. I had we couldn't do anything while lockdown. Yeah. So then I went fucking. I lost crazy, my mind. I, yeah. I went crazy. It was a really difficult time for a lot it, of people. For all of yeah. us, yeah. And like, and when you think back on it, like it wasn't just me. It was just everybody. Everybody mm-hmm. is losing their minds because yeah. Of, so everybody is like there. There are some people who are like oh, it's it's so lovely to stay at home. You know, yeah. you don't need to go out. But if home is a space where you don't feel hundred percent safe. Mm-hmm. You're just you're just forced to face that every day. Yeah. Yeah. And then feeling trapped was what went against my core values, yeah, right? Because yeah. it's so important to you to mm. feel free. Mm. It's okay. You... Take a moment. It's okay. Yeah. yeah. That was a really challenging time for everybody, I'm sure. Yeah. So then mm, what was my point? I had a point to this. Dosha routine, ground routine. So then, yeah. so then, see I, the and, pita bringing you back to the point each time. <laughs> and, I, and I couldn't, I couldn't. Um, what do you call that? I couldn't. Uh, I couldn't train. 
because mm. there was no more jujitsu. Yeah. And I couldn't find a space to put the train. Yeah, yeah. And, you and then even, like you practicing yoga. yoga online was also not quite. You can't even you. yoga and like yeah. all the studios are closed. And I tried mm. to do online classes for a bit. I, was like, I didn't Doesn't get it. it. I didn't. Yeah, not everybody. Can. I needed to be in that space yeah. with, with people. So. Yeah. So it was a dark time for me and then I had to deal with my own shit at home and it mm. forced me to, and I'm sure a lot of people were forced to deal with whatever they were, they could distract themselves with. Mm. So whatever problems that they had, they could, you could distract it by going out to meet your friends or going out and just yeah, drinking or whatever. Yeah. You could distract yourself but yeah. now That's you, you can't. You, you can't have to go face and it you gotta face day. it every day. Yeah. And then, and then I just I, I didn't know how to deal with it and I just mm. spiraled man mm, mm. and it was the first time that I spiraled to the point where I felt like something was not right like mm. you know sometimes you feel sad you just like you get over it like mm. I, I feel like I'm I'm strong enough emotionally to just deal with my own shit but then like at that point I felt like oh, something's not right this is not I don't feel normal mm. and I, I guess it, it was a, a, a bit of depression and it's a weird to even say that, you know, like when you, anyway. So, so, I mean, I, I, I tried my best to deal with it. And I then didn't know it was so rough. It, it wasn't, it wasn't like anything happened. It was just mm. like a very vulnerable time. Mm. And, and there was no way to, to, like, I didn't, I didn't see a way out. Because I felt trapped. I, like, there was nowhere to go. There was no one to see. And I, and like travel wasn't going to be a, uh, a possibility An anymore like so that I time, saw yeah. no escape Yeah, I saw no escape so then my freedom was now mm. compromised mm. I felt trapped and everything that I did was always to seek out that that freedom but then I, I saw no way yeah, out travelling was such a big part of your life yeah. man which honoured that, that that part of me also yeah. and I guess I'll dive into this freedom thing a little yeah. bit deeper but I'll finish so I went to see a, a, a therapist I went to see one was a hypnotherapist mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. which was quite an interesting experience mm. and then I went to see a therapist therapist and I was just one off but I felt like it was such an interest like it was a great like I really enjoyed it like it, you because this kind of thing is a bit like okay I'm a I'm like a I don't like to help myself like if I'm sick I don't see the doctor because I'll just I'll just nap I'll just take a panel mm. I'll get I'll be fine Maybe it's just the ego thing. Like, I don't want. I don't because need... it kind of forces you to admit that. Maybe, there are maybe, yeah. That's yeah. true. Okay. So, yeah. And it's just I don't want to deal with that. Or mm. I feel like I can help myself. I don't need. Mm. I don't need no one to help me. You know. <laughs> yeah. So I don't even see the doctor, let alone a a, a brain doctor. Yeah. So I was like, I. But then I was aware enough to realize that I was in a place where like, hey, this is not. This is weird. Mm. I'm not myself. I can't even. Th- there was a huge glaze over my entire, like, I felt disconnected, incredibly disconnected with everything. Like, I felt mm. like, I don't know where I am. I, I feel like I can see myself and I'm trapped in my own body. It was a very strange sensation, but it was almost a physical sensation, like a physical dullness, a, num- a numbness. Mm-hmm. And it was very scary. And I felt like I just had no energy to do anything. I was just staying at home. I was just so, like, bang. I was just like, mm-hmm. yeah. And it was it. And I guess I, through more reading and through more research, I realized that it was just your body's way of surviving. Mm. You, let's say, if you can't run away, you can't fight, flight, freeze. Yeah, right. Yeah. So you can't attack the situation. I can't run away from the situation. So you're just so stuck I, in limbo. And and my body's way of reacting to it was to disassociate, to disconnect. Right. Don't feel the pain, so just I ran away in my own mind. Yeah. So just pretend like I'm just like hibernating already. Mm-hmm. So it's it was very interesting to see my body go through that and my mind go through that. Mm. So then when I went to see the hypnotherapist, so a hypnotherapist would tell you it's someone that you see like say when you have a irrational fear or a fear. Let's say a mm-hmm. fear like mm-hmm. I have a fear. Let's say uh, for example I have a fear of heights or fear of spiders. Mm-hmm. That fear is in a way irrational. Because there's nothing scary about the spider. Right, there's right. nothing scary about, like, say, taking a flight. Oh, I'm, I'm scared mm. of flying. Mm. So that, that he would help you to, or rather he would say, let's say he would hypnotize you or to show you, to reveal to you that there's nothing wrong with the spider. It's just your brain connecting fear with that object. Mm-hmm. So then how can you reconnect that path 
to something else. So how can you look at the spider and say like, hmm, that's used, not an object. That I used, I'm yeah, of. I used yeah. to be afraid of that, but now I can see it's just an insect. There's okay. nothing scared about it. Okay, so he connected it to my dad. So that was the. Wow. Oh. It's okay. Wow, he he managed to identify that man. I mean, it was. It, it wasn't a hard thing to identify. It's it's a very obvious thing. Yeah. So I mean, I I went there telling him like it's it's this one. This is the this is yeah, the problem, yeah. right? No, so but to hear it from somebody else is not always easy. So so. He he okay. So he he rationalized as okay. That was the spider. Mm. Um, and so he would he he did what he needed to do to 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 change that connection mm. because the fear. The fear is irrational, right? It's not for context. Um, it's not like he... I was never abused. <laughs> I was never raped. Yeah, there was yeah. no... Like, there was no... It's just, you know, your, your parents in, yeah. in life. So, uh... So, okay. So, say, say, he, say he connected that as the... The, 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 the problem to, mm. to reconnect, to rewire mm. for the for the what do you call it the, the therapist she connected it to my mom which is very interesting mm-hmm. so then I never thought it was my mom so the idea is that because of say say okay say I felt this way about my dad but then my mom never made it never did anything about it so there was no I didn't feel safe my mom was someone that I turned to when I was young because I had no one else to turn to I couldn't turn to my dad so mm-hmm. I turned to my mom and my mom didn't make me feel safe or my mom didn't, um, she didn't save me from this situation, you know? My mom sort of just, I felt like betrayed. Mm. But in a very adolescent way, you know your childhood, all, all these problems always come yeah. from your childhood. You know, actually, <laughs> like, do, you're, when, when you're young, you yeah. did this or you faced mm. or you encountered this and therefore you are now mm. scarred because of yeah. the, part, the associations that you made through your experiences. Mm. So then everything... Uh, everything that like say my dad did or didn't do or my mom didn't make me feel safe in that place then formed who I am today right because I felt trapped in that space it was something that I never wanted to feel and then you can't get out of and 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 that's why I say I always seek out freedom and anything that threatens that freedom I don't want mm, which which um right. Wait, it's and 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 it, it's nice to understand this, yeah. you know, from a very core level. Because you always think, oh, oh it's because my, uh, um, whatever. You think it's a very surface level thing, but then it's it's so it's so rooted. It's in, so you know? yeah, it's and so that's what that's in. the power of therapy, yeah. where they can talk to you about it and they can share these, like they can dive deep. Yeah. So then I was like, oh, so it's part of my mom as well. Then, then like you you you, it's the there's that resentment, there's that betrayal that you yeah. feel as a child because. You're so you're so vulnerable at that stage. You don't know who to turn to. So then now I understand this, and now I see like how subconsciously I'm always seeking freedom. Mm-hmm. So then the freedom, at that point when I was younger, was a very low. What's the word? Like a um, like say every. I was telling Elaine this this morning. So mm-hmm. every value or every emotion has a higher vibration and a lower vibration. Mm-hmm. Say. I want to feel happy. The lower vibration of happiness is maybe I'm just going to order what I want to eat. I'm going to eat all the junk food I want. I want to drink every night. I'm just going to have fun every day because I want to be happy. Mm. The higher vibration of, of of seeking happiness is to maybe be kind to people, um, to, 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 to show compassion, to, mm. to, to volunteer or whatever. So then there's, I can still find happiness but through do two different paths. Mm. Oh, you <sighs> so Pita then, cannot lower the fan anymore. <laughs> Pita will start to sweat. Huh? I tell you. No, it's not a fan. <laughs> la, it's just my. Um. Uh, so then, freedom, mm. that that core value that I always hold very close. I travel. I, I travel. It gives me that sense of freedom, that mm. liberation, and that freedom has also caused me to create a narrative for myself, which I'm sure you know and everybody knows, yeah. which is. You tell them. 
which is, uh, you know, I I choose to live in a certain way. Yeah. And it's not a secret. It's not a secret. It's not, mm. but it's not something that I go around telling people. So, which is I don't. I I help I help. I help you tell people because people always ask me. They don't yeah. ask you. They're like, oh, you know what's going on with Aaron and so, so, so. Yeah. And then it's you... Just Aaron doesn't yeah. date. Yeah. Aaron doesn't date. Aaron doesn't yeah. date. Yeah. Yeah. And I, 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 liked, I liked it. I liked mm. that narrative. I liked that how you helped me enforce that narrative. Mm. And I like how my friends will do that as well because I've been single for a long time. I, mm. I mean, and I like it. I like being single. I like being alone. Because the price of freedom is loneliness. Mm. And I was willing to pay that price for the longest time. What about now? It, we'll, get to, we'll get to that later. So, <laughs> um, uh, what was my point? I had a point. Okay, so it was a lower vibration. I, I've, I've come to realize this now like, as, as I get older and I get a bit more experience mm. with life and my understanding of myself. So the, what do, you, what do you call it? That quality was, or how I perceived it was a very low, vibra- low vibration mm. version mm. of it. Yeah. I want to be free so nobody tell me what to do. I don't want to get tied down. I want to go where I want. I want to do what I want. And, and that, was, that was how I escaped my situation. Yeah. What's the higher vibration? Hmm. So, the higher vibration of it is how that you can find freedom from stability. You can find freedom from discipline. Yeah. And these are qualities that uh when you think about it, discipline, that's a very restrictive quality. No, but you think about your predominant dosha being mm. vata. Exactly. Needing grounding from routine. Right. So when you have certain things set in place and you have certain things that you don't need to worry about, you know that that stability is there but you can find freedom within stability. And it's, it's that balance. It's like, so. it's like yin and yang. Yeah. It is like, it is like stability in your warrior two legs but movement in your yes. arms. Yes. Right? So, so it's, that awareness that comes from the practice that yeah. I've realized and it's mm. understanding about the doshas and who you mm. are, that self-discovery. And then, why? Oh, that's fine. Huh? Oh, she was just looking at the noise outside of no, the street. No, not the noise. I'm looking whether it's raining. I think it was here. Like, I, <laughs> I mean, it? it feels like it's dark. It's quite dark. Okay. But I think it will rain. Uh. When I was walking, it was quite okay. dark. I mean, if it rains, I'll let you know when you close the window. I need to keep the clothes. Because now, Ooh. adulting. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, okay. Um. <laughs> I tell you, this is it, like let's digress for a bit. This is super funny, okay? Because I got used to staying with my with my mom. Like, mom we stay in the, the condo. Yeah. No, we stay in the condo on on oh, the first keep floor. It so la. so so it's inside. So when it rains, the only thing I need to worry about is just closing mm. the windows. So so my first week staying here, I was just I was just like raining. I okay la, yeah, Then just close the windows and left the clothes outside yeah. for like a good twenty minutes. And I was like. Hey, I need to keep the clothes also. And I just went to keep the clothes. Mm. Yeah. And at that time, I think I had not bought the the stick that can yeah, put yeah. the bamboo up because Jude is tall enough to put it up. So I didn't huh? need it. Yeah. How? <laughs> just reach your hand out and just pull it? Just reach out and put. Okay. Yeah. So while we're talking about freedom, right. he doesn't have the freedom to reach his arms up in his own living room because he'll hit the fan. Oh, why is that tall? Yeah. For some context, he's 1.9 okay. meters tall. Okay, okay. Yeah, he'll hit the... He's had hit the, okay, this okay, light okay, a couple yeah. of times already. Okay, okay. Yeah, so <laughs> just a bit of humor to digress a slightly heavy topic. But yeah, we were talking about finding um, movement in stillness and having flexibility the, the, that, and strength. That higher vibration of freedom. Yeah. So then I've always been very narrow-minded in in thinking like freedom means this, this, this. Yeah. But then through maturity, mm. I realized that freedom can mean many different things. It's not black and white. Yeah, like, because there's a lot of gray areas. I've always mm. say say for the aspect of travel, where I would travel when I was younger, and I would just have no plans. I would just go I buy a ticket, a one way mm. ticket. The power of the one way ticket, where there's mm. no direction. I go and then I just just see where the world takes me, and I, and I have so many adventures because I had no destination, and I valued that right. Do but you then, do that a lot? Get one way tickets. Yeah, I mean, I have to get the one way, I have to get another ticket back yeah, just to I mean, have the, okay. but then there was no plans, like, you know, I was yeah, just like, yeah, okay, book right. one and then I'll book the next one in like mm. three months and I have nowhere else to go. Mm. So so then when I was younger, that was great. And then when I was 
older, like the most recent trip that I went to, which was to India. India. I mean, not the most recent one. I mean, most recent one was Thailand, but the recent recent mm-hmm. one was the uh, India. Mm. So I went, and again, I had no plans. I had no. Uh, I had nothing to sp- specifically go and see or visit, or I had no plans. I didn't even know where I was going to stay the next day. And then I went, and then I was just like, hmm, what am I doing? Like, what What am I doing? I, have, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just wandering around. I'm wasting my time a bit. I still lived, I still traveled the same way I traveled, which is rough. Let's call it that. I, mm. Oops, let me just make sure that laptop doesn't die okay um it better still be recording <laughs> you wanna check you can move it there to connect okay yeah so then I was asking myself like what is the, my purpose of travelling is it mm-hmm. to escape because mm. if I'm escaping then I can never truly escape because you you can't escape a situation uh, you will never you really can, be free yeah, if you, you never, constantly exactly. need something, you know? Yeah, you're so, always going to be bound by that if you need this to survive. Yeah, so then I realized that like mm, I'm leaving or I'm traveling to be free, but I wasn't free. I was still bound by whatever I was running away from. So then, ah, I need to address what I need to address, whatever it was. So then, but the, the unfortunate thing was that now travel didn't give me that solace that I always mm. found. They never gave me that perspective that I needed to have. Yeah. You know, so then... Those oh, break, shit, then, breakthrough aha moments yeah, that so you then, can only get so from then, travel. So then like, oh no, I can't, I can't rely on travel anymore. Like, mm. you know? So then, all the things that I seeked out to uphold freedom, to maintain it, no longer served me. And I think I had this conversation with you fairly, a couple of months ago, mm. where like, say, travel doesn't give me that freedom. Um, living my life the way I've lived it hasn't given me that freedom either and then I there was a point where I was like mm, uh, I don't think I think, think something needs to change mm. but I didn't know what to do I didn't know how to change because if you've been living your life in a certain way for so long it's hard and you're not just, you're just not sure well, what am I going to do now so I've always lived the single life I've never really let anybody in I didn't know how to and there were a couple of people that I met along the way that were I'm very grateful to have had in my life at that point but then like like all of them they've left you know because it's, it's not a I don't really exude security mm. so then but then I each time that I m- meet these different people they give me an idea of what it would be like on the other side you know mm. and then I guess a part of my ego is just like I don't want to settle I don't want to um I, I need not conform I just I didn't want to give up my freedom mm. but then that was because of my understanding of freedom at that time was I need to be phys- literally free yeah. so then now say I've, I've thought about it a little bit more and then I understand mm. that like these things uh, it just it just it was just my narrow mindedness where I didn't realise like, what it meant to be free or how I can find freedom through different aspects mm. through, through through routine through discipline through stability which is a very counterintuitive thing, lah. You would mm. don't think that these things will bring freedom. That aspect of freedom, yeah. yeah. Uh, so then, um, you know, things are shifting, as they always do, as they should for yeah. growth. It's I've come to realize this, and um, remember, there is strength in flexibility. So yeah, it so it's about finding balance, yeah. or. It, it doesn't mean that just because you are questioning your narrative that you have lost your conviction. Yeah. Because sometimes just just being able to admit that, oh, that might be right. Mm. Oh, that might be a different way of, of living that I didn't consider. Now it broadens your perspective. It does. It and does. it's also like, say, my ego mind is the one that's holding me back. Mm. My ego mind is telling me like, if you change who you are now then who are you going to be then there's that identity crisis mm. of um, you know are people, you being true to yourself? people know yeah. me yeah. for for certain things yeah. and that is and in a way like that narrative has not only like the, narr- I, the narrative that I've I've had has been so strong that now people enforce it for me 
Like, yeah. you know, like even you. Like, like me. Yeah. yeah. People ask you, hey, who's, who's, what's, who's there? Who's you know, that? what's going you know? on? I'm just like, nope. Yeah. yeah, it's just no. Like, you yeah. really know. And there are times when, like, say, not only you, like my friends, other people, mm. they just like, hey, I'm single. You introduce your friends. Like, then they'll, they'll, they'll want them. I know. I haven't done that. Mm. So then, it, it, it not only shuts out that, like, it limits me. Because now, um, even if you try to change the world, like, hey, hey, come on, Aaron, like, this is not you, you know, that kind of thing. Mm. Um, so then, it's, you, you start to believe that, you know, you start to believe that. And Everybody already thinks this of you, why don't you just continue being that same person? Yeah. But so, do you know, yeah. I think it was, um, I think it was Jim Carrey who said that uh, depression is when you try to uphold the person that everybody else thinks you are. Interesting. And then, yeah, and then one day you're just like, I can't be this person. It's too tiring. I mm. can't. So sometimes just, everybody looks at me, for example, right? And they think that, oh, she's this really happy-go-lucky teacher who always tells uh, jokes in class. Mm. And some days when you have a really difficult day, it's very difficult to match up to that person that everybody thinks you are. Mm. You know, they'll be like, I am is so, you know, she doesn't care about this kind of thing. One, uh, she... Uh, so actually a lot of them are very surprised when they hear that I have trouble with my with my self-esteem they'll be like huh you care about this kind of thing one man you you like you were in a swim team for like three four years you didn't care whoever told you you have like two broad shoulders for a woman you know why why should this bother you even and me I, yeah. like when you told me this I was like huh what do you mean like yeah, so me is so bubbly and yeah, so, she's so full bubbly, of life she's yeah. so confident when she, when she teaches nobody will believe that like every time I look in the in the mirror it's such an anxiety it's such an anxiety in the same right. time for me and and sometimes it's just it's okay to tell people that no that's not who I am and and this this is still something that I struggle with and it's tiring to keep on keeping up with that impression that everybody has of you you know mm. for you for example people think that you are this um uh, very, very friendly outgoing person who always takes videos of people and points yeah. at them you know but there are some days that you just i, I can't do that i need mm. to take a break and i also want to explore what it's like to live outside of my narrative you that's interesting yeah. yeah right like i today i don't want to live this narrative i want to put on a different pair of glasses right. for example and you have the right to to change your mind to, to change who you are at any yeah. given time la. yeah so um, I was telling you this the last time we talked about like uh, uh, therapy and, mm. and stuff um, how how uh, my therapist used the example of glasses to help me Gla- glasses okay. like, like drinking glasses, glasses. oh, no, like glasses, oh it's like spectacles, spectacles uh, right so um, she would she, after a few sessions we kind of identified that my limiting belief is that I feel I'm not good enough so she said when you put on these glasses all the situations around you will be affected so you are looking for evidence from people and from things and events that will support your limiting belief and you're mm-hmm. looking for people yeah, sure to is, agree uh, with you uh, that you are not good enough mm-hmm. so you will start to pick up things that people say you know just something casual like like hey, your shoulder very broad and then I'll just yeah something so stupid something so small you know or or like I will look in the mirror and I'll be like There's evidence everywhere that I'm not good enough mm. you know these beautiful yogis walking in and then I'm like a potato teaching class you know these are such terrible things that, that we tell ourselves you know and so to attempt to help you with that um, when you put on the glasses that that convince you that a relationship comes with shackles and unhappiness mm. and that uh, loneliness is a small price to pay mm. for all that unhappiness and all that trouble, you know, going to all that thr- trouble. Then you'll be looking around at dysfunctional relationships and you'll be looking for the negative things and then each time that moment pops up, you'll be like, ah, see, this is exactly why. Which it, yeah. uh, which it has, like... Yeah, it I will mean, just keep reaffirming your, your limiting belief, you know, so... There was this, uh, there was this really difficult um, experience that I had. I went for my first uh, wedding gown fitting, mm. and uh, it's such a girly thing to talk about that. Mm. But I went for the wedding gown fitting. I I put it on. I looked at myself in the mirror, and the first thought that I had to myself was, "What do you think this was a magic dress? You will suddenly become mm. beautiful." <laughs> 
Yeah, and then um, I told Jude about it, and he he gave me the link to this um online um therapist who who shares like really positive messages mm. on Instagram, and she said that when the voice in your head starts sounding like a toxic friend rather than a best friend who's mm. supporting you, you need to change the voice. Mm. Yeah, so I've tried to put on different glasses. It's 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 difficult, but it's it's the only thing that that can help you. So you can go for as many therapy sessions as you want, but if you don't put it into play, it's like going for physio once every two uh, months and then you don't practice it right, on your right. own, you know? So um, she would give me this sheet that I need to um, fill up and it's Homework. like it's like a thought log. Right. So every time I have a thought and, and it supports my limiting belief, mm. she will ask me to look for evidence that disproves it. Mm. Yeah, so it's really tiring and, and it's so easy for my... The, it, the first few sessions I kept writing down uh, other evidence, I said, none, none, none. And right. I just couldn't find, I couldn't. But after that, um, through a lot of hard work, I would just yeah. try to look for that that with, outside evidence. You with know? a little bit more critical thinking and it yeah. forces you to think about it. Like, does, no, it why, does. why? It makes do you I... question the root cause and then... And then you can create new paths to the can, to see yeah. yourself in a different way. You can. Yeah. So I feel like that will be really helpful for you as well. No, for sure. Like mm. I think through practice and through talk, speaking to people mm. and to just being compassionate to yourself, right? Yeah. If you can... If you, if you see that you're, you are a vessel that is... Po- you're pot... What do you call it? You are... Thank you. <laughs> Might I you, offer you a tissue? <laughs> you are susceptible to change, right? You are capable of changing who you are. Then that possibility has no bounds already, right? You can. Yeah, you're, ne- yeah. you're, you're not, not going to be bound stuck by here. it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, you're not bound by the belief. I think um, I had two th- two thoughts that I wanted mm. to share, which I oh, I need to ground my fucking vata <laughs> mind and think of what it was. Things. We are talking about freedom, feeling trapped, about the loneliness. I think one of the things was that, like, I think you've, you've shared with me the story before, mm-hmm. and I remembered thinking of how, like, um, how 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 wrong you are of seeing yourself in that way, mm-hmm. because I've never seen you in that way, and and I've always seen you. In fact, I've seen you in a in a completely different light, where it's so like, wow, man, is like. What's wrong with Mayan's life? She, everything is perfect. Everything is fine. She's got nothing to worry about. I see it mm. in that way, and it's unfortunate that you couldn't see that. Yeah. And like, I felt like, how, like, how can you, how can you be so foolish to not see that? These are all things that we've talked about before. But every time yeah. we talk about it, it just, yeah, it just hits the, it just hits the button. I, that's for for me. I always knew that I was working with this, but like you, I the. Not gonna go and see a doctor for this. I was like, Mama needs to save some money for a new house, yeah. right? So, the oh, fuck. I don't know if there was a defining moment for you when you decided that it's time for you to go and see uh, a doctor. But, but for me, um, it was it was this um, marriage preparation course that I had to do. With, <laughs> are gonna, you all right? I'm gonna blow my nose. You're gonna, yeah, just, just, I'm so sick of that. Okay. I'm sure you guys can oh. still hear that. <laughs> oh, can I yeah. another one? Sure. But please continue. And, st- and students say that I keep making them cry in class. Eh? You are not really helping my case. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, anyway, Aaron's oh, nose right. is entirely let's, red. Uh, Just to paint you a beautiful picture. I have I'm a red. Christmas uh. tree behind and you look like Rudolph the Red Nose Ranger. <laughs> I knew we were going to fucking yeah. have a cry fest today. <laughs> yeah. Um... It was this uh, marriage preparation course that I had to take last year, right. which is great, by the way. I think any couple who wants to go and um, get married should take a marriage preparation course. But uh, ours was from a Catholic point of view because we were going to get married in mm. church. So Jude's Catholic, but I'm not. And um, it's really good. They give you this uh, list of uh, traits that you need to uh, kind of rate yourself and then uh, rate what your partner would think. So, okay. so uh, for example, there was like a drive, motivation. And so I will give myself a score and then I will give a score for that I think Jude will give me, for example. Uh, so both is rating yeah, yourself. You told me this before, but go Yeah, on. yeah. So then, then one of the, one of, so like um, uh, uh, independence and like all, all, all that. Lah. And then mm. there, was, there was a statement that was like, um, I find myself attractive. Mm. or something and and then it's on a range of 1 to 10 and then I put 2 mm. <laughs> so Jude put like I think he put 5 this because is for himself or for so this the is like person? so he will rate himself oh, and okay, then okay. he will rate what he thinks I will uh, rate him 
Oh, okay. Mm, okay, so so uh, he he rated uh, he thought that I would rate myself a five because he knows that I have low self esteem. Right. But when we put a number to it, and then he saw that I was like two, huh. he 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 was like quite a, taken yeah. aback. He he said, "Why, why you give yourself this number? The glasses that you wear, yeah, are so, so dirty. thick, eh. so yeah. thick, yeah, so thick. The the degree yeah. very thick. I need to go audition. I need to go for LASIK, yeah, ah. yeah, yeah. yeah, so he so for him that opened up like his eyes because I finally put a number on it. And then mm. he knows how serious mm. it is, and then he, and then um." at the end of that session, we had like a talk about like things that we want to talk to each other about more. And then I wanted to talk to him about his um, his need to always have a lot of achievements. So that's one of his saboteurs is he feels like he need to, needs to have a lot of achievements mm. to be uh, worthy in life. Right. And whereas one of mine is like, I he, he felt like we needed to talk about mental health a little bit more. So he he talked to me about it and and we had like a big cry fest as well. Mm. Uh, the crying was entirely on my part. <laughs> I have not seen him cry today, you know. On our, on our, yeah, on our wedding day, maybe just like like a bit of like this thing over, but nothing yeah, come yeah, out. Yeah. Nothing come out. Yeah, oh. even when I'm walking down the aisle, I was like, wow, I need to walk back. You clearly never yeah. see me walking <laughs> in properly, right? Yeah, so then um, at the start of the course, also they asked like, you know what, do you want to get out of this course? And then I told my two very Christian, uh, my two very Catholic uh, mentoring couple that I want to see my husband to be crying. Yeah. <laughs> so hopefully see him crying. And like, okay, uh, thanks for sharing your intention, man. Yeah, but so like I, I cried a lot and then he and then he said, um, I really wish you would be able to see yourself the way I see you. Mm. Yeah. Such a good man. <laughs> yeah. So um it's still a work in progress. I mean, I uh, second, I, yeah, I, I, I saw I saw the therapist for maybe like yeah. a, a year and that so so after that I felt like I wanted to do that um to try and fix uh, whatever whatever root cause that is right. here before I bring my baggage into this marriage. So I told him, okay, I will see a therapist um, until we get married, and then I'll try to work on this. Yeah. So that was the that was the, the starting point. Like, that was that was. Where I mean, I, I second what he said about mm. about that reassurance to you. Like I wish, mm. like not only he, like I, I'm sure me and and everybody else who's close mm. to you, they wish we all wish that you could see yourself in a different mm. light because we see yourself in that. Like right, mm-hmm. like how I was saying, like how I, when I first saw you, like yeah, Mia's got it all. Like she's mm. she's got the the skills, got the looks, got the <laughs> got the the stability, whatever mm. you you're 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 all there already. Nothing's mm. wrong with her. But then everybody's got their own problems. Yeah, everybody's got yeah. their own shit. So like yeah. understanding how even let's say someone that you put on a pedestal has yeah. their own insecurities, right. it gives you uh it allows you to be a bit more compassionate about mm. say that guy that was mean to you or your boss who's giving you shit all the time or even your parents or yeah. whoever everybody's got their own everybody's struggles, got their own struggles yeah. and everybody is nobody is born mm. an asshole mm-hmm. they are turned into them you know I mean, like, I, mean, I, mean, I mean some people yeah. maybe they're just assholes but like everybody started out as a child mm. and as an innocent child and then through time and circumstance they've become who they were today and if they uh, mean to people it's because of something that happened to them when they were young or that they yeah, never dealt with yeah. it at that point yeah. so then when you trace it all back it's always back to your childhood when something mm. wasn't whatever yeah. and then like how I think I was watching a TED talk about how how we uh, it's always the how we form our our conditioning is always based on two things our experience and our association of that experience mm. so then if uh what was the example if you if you were in if your husband proposed to you in Paris mm. you would associate Paris as a great place a very romantic place mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but if your friend was mugged on the streets yeah you would associate Paris as a dangerous place mm-hmm. so then the experience associated it to the fear right right so then let's say it's when, like trauma I yeah guess. trauma yeah. it is trauma yeah. so then that 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 path has been drawn. Mm. Paris, then the brain will trigger equals, trigger, trigger, equals danger, equals yeah. fear, equals whatever. Mm. Therefore, uh, okay, when I'm there, I physically feel that, ooh, it's a bit tense. I feel uneasy, mm. whatever. So now, like, say for me, I associated relationships with with something negative, whatever. Mm. It's just, like, it, it's not going to work mm. because I've seen it. Mm. I've seen it through my parents. I've mm. seen it through my own experiences mm. and I've seen it through 
the experiences my, of others, your, the your experience friends, of others, the and I've seen so many people get divorced. I've yeah. seen, I've, I've been involved in so many affairs. Mm. That all these things have created a path in my mind mm. that associates relationships with something negative. Yeah, that's why I don't. Why would I want to put myself mm. through that? Why would I want to go to Paris when I know it's a dangerous place? Yeah. It's about rewiring the brain. It's yeah. about understanding like, hey, you see you, you see that connection that you made? Mm. You see how um, irrational that can be or yes, how yes. unjustified that relationship yeah. can be. So then it's up to you to form new um, paths yeah. to the mind, to associate it with something better yeah. or, or move away from that fear mm. and to, to move towards your true self. Because everybody wants to find love. Everybody wants yeah. to find... Nobody, nobody's out to hurt you. Nobody's out yeah. to cause pain, right? Mm. So then everybody deep down, they want the same thing. Everybody wants love. Everybody wants acceptance. Everybody yeah. wants to feel good. Mm. But then how you find that is through your own path. Let's say I want to feel good by making people feel like shit so that I can feel better about myself. Yeah. Then maybe I will do that. that but that's the again the now, lower yeah. vibration, right? Mm-hmm. So then through the awareness, you realize, okay, I we all want the same thing. We all want happiness. We all want acceptance. How can we find it? Higher vibration, low vibration. Mm. So then it's harder to do the higher vibration one because it's less, it's more giving. Mm. The lower one is more selfish. Like yeah. just give me the attention, give me the appraisal, mm. I'll feel good. Mm. The other one takes work, takes hard work and it takes stepping out of the comfort zone, you know, to create a new path about relationships means I gotta step into one. Ooh, ew. Mm. <laughs> like ew, I don't want that. Yeah. And it shakes up the whole narrative. It mm. shakes up... Um, whatever, like all your past conditionings. And and for me, why I, st- I was still so resistant to it was because I felt no, I, I had no reason. I had no reason to want to step into that yeah, space yeah. because every every relationship I've seen ends badly. Mm. Every, like, like, what do you mean you have to lie to your boyfriend because he doesn't trust you to yeah. stay out too late? Like, what does this mean? Mm. So it's like all these paths I see, like, to get into something, to get in a relationship means to lie. To, to cheat, mm. to be unhappy, to sacrifice, to... But you see how interesting it was that those are all the relationships that you that you identify and mm. that you see. And you actually are surrounded by a lot of friends who are also in healthy relationships. But the glasses the glasses yeah. are not going to pick that up because you are you are putting on this perception right. that, that only identifies the negative yeah. ones. Yeah, so get a different prescription and then you try to get used to it and pick up the different things right. and then see what it's like. We actually talked a bit about trauma in uh, our teacher training also. Right. It was one of the topics that one of my classmates presented and right. she said this sentence that stayed with me un- until today. Trauma exists because of the stories we tell ourselves about what happened. Hmm. Yeah, so at that time, uh, it hit me with a very uh, teacher training specific example. Hmm. I, I was in an inversion and we were doing an adjustment workshop and one of my classmates gave me a slightly inaccurate adjustment which caused me to fall. Hmm. And and I fell to the side, so I was I, I hurt my neck. La. It was Ooh. like a side-facing plow pose. So this is the story that Barry yeah, told yeah, you yeah, in your yeah, teacher yeah. training, right? Yeah. So uh, the rest of my teacher training, I was like in maybe the sixth week where you're kind of feeling like strong and, and unlocking new things every day. But it kind of it kind of went um, south because like even warrior two my arms also cannot be parallel to the ground so Ooh. that was difficult for me and right. and I, I I treated her with a little bit of resentment. Um, resentment and I was quite hostile to her for the rest of the teacher yeah. training understandably and, so understandably, at that time yeah. yeah but and, and she also knows she, she tried not to um, to yeah. poke anything but each teacher training session I would be reminded of it because the, my body is in so much pain right. and even more resentment I would send in her direction mm. and on I think just the, the session before our graduation where she happened to present uh, one of my other classmates presented about trauma and the whole time she was talking, I was just reminded of that situation. Right. I was, and I kept telling myself, my classmate hurt me, my classmate hurt me, my classmate hurt me. Mm. But we were both in a learning environment and accidents happen, mistakes happen. So after that after that, that presentation, I walked over to my classmate and I gave her a hug and I said, I'm so sorry, I've been so hostile mm. to you. Like I feel like I've been holding on to this. And she said, yeah, I, like, I really hope that both of us can, yeah. can let it go. She can feel and she, and she knows better than to try to like confront me about right, it right. because she felt like she was in the wrong. Right. And she herself was also telling herself stories. Can you imagine as a teacher trainee, if that happened to you, like right. not just me, but imagine You'll her. So bad, uh, She'll yeah. be so afraid to touch any other student, oh, right? True. Yeah. I receive a bad adjustment. So maybe it just makes me more cautious as a student. But the, the 
the experience was more damaging to her as as oh. a teacher, right? So wow. if I had not gone to her and we had not got past this hurdle, right. like the worst thing that happened to me is maybe I just very scared every time I do a hit stand, need to be in front of a wall, right. which is the situation now anyway. But for her, maybe she'll be so afraid to touch her students, you know, she'll be so afraid to 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 is offer she advice. Uh, she she taught for a while, but uh, never went into okay, it full time. Okay. But uh, she she was in it just to learn how to right, anyway. Right. Yeah, but we don't we don't oh. think about the impact that it has on on other yeah. people you know so think about the glasses that you are putting on for yourself right. and and you believe this in a certain way but there are other people who still believe that you can experience freedom in a, in a mm. different way and that not every relationship is the same right. you know and, and they feel like it, it can happen differently for you but maybe you think more about how it affects you rather than how it affects the people around you you know so just stepping out yeah, of your yeah, body yeah. for a while I feel like it really can open up your perspective man. that's true yeah I feel that yoga helps to 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 heal. Mm. Yoga helps to bring that awareness yeah. to the body, to the mind, and to mm. your to your habits, to your samskaras. Because like yeah. we kind of run away from that, mm. and it's sometimes we're not even aware of it. Why is it that when you see the spider, you scared? Mm. Because maybe on a time it jumped onto you or something, and then and then you just never really thought about it. You just mm. like mm, it's a spider. Uh, I'm scared. Everyone then, explain for me and the listeners what samskara is. Samskara is your conditioning, mm. right? So then oftentimes it is something that you ex- experience when you were young mm. or just whatever, like any experience that now you have associated. That has impacted you. Yes. Okay. So oftentimes these samskaras are negative, mm. right? Um, whatever, someone bumped into you on the train or whatever, then you just mm. have a negative conditioning mm. and it forms your habits and our existence is and how we are is based on all these habits that mm-hmm. we have. Um, oh, hashtag Aaron doesn't date. Oh, yeah. Or like, yeah. you know, the narrative, it creates mm-hmm. the narrative of who you are. So then, that is the ego mind creating that story, that narrative. Mm-hmm. To find, so then yoga is the path of your true self, trying to find who you really are, right? Yeah. So then it's about creating positive samskaras through action mm. and that's why ooh this is interesting now that I think about it so I think n- not only from my realisation of how I was living last time that mm. I decided something wasn't right mm. through the awareness I realised something okay something needs to change but then I, you can be aware of it but then not change what made me want to change was and, I, and something that I learned recently about karma where I felt like, well, if the world wants me to change, something will tell me, right? The universe will tell me. Mm-hmm. And then I always ex- uh, I always thought like, okay, um, if someone wants me to stop this, something's going to happen. Mm, yeah. And, I, and it never came. I never had my repercussion, mm. if you know what I mean, without going into details. <laughs> Yeah. All my oh, is that the lady? The mm. screaming? Ooh. Yeah. So Mayan has a Mayan has a crazy neighbor that would shout <laughs> some random stuff, and she's shouting now. Yeah, she's shouting now. Wow. Do you do you know oh. Celeste who stays nearby as well? Oh. She knows like last time, uh, Fandes also. So she, so she knows okay, about okay. this woman as wow. well. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Hey, wow, <laughs> I wonder so if our listeners can hear. <laughs> I think so. She's quite loud. She's just going yeah. oh oh. Yeah. So bang so some so, stuff. but yeah. um the funny thing is I told my my dad um that recently she's been shouting a little bit more yeah. and he said she's been shouting since 1994 <gasps> and I just never noticed it because I never paid attention Ooh, to it which yeah. is interesting it's interesting right because I stayed here for 20 years to, so, yeah. so the house that I'm living in now with, with Jude uh, right. was previously my childhood home right. a body over from my dad so, so he said now it's your house so you take care of it differently and you pay more attention to the things around it differently mm. last time you come home you pay attention to different things so this noise never bothered you interesting yeah so interesting but it was right? always there it was always there yeah, yeah. Mm. right so that's a, that's a lesson to be learned yeah. it is it is yeah so so then yeah he said okay. he, he's always very philosophical yeah, yeah so okay okay I mean okay so thing. so back to my my um uh, what do you call it like my own Realization. Yes, yes, yeah. So I, I okay. So how do I, in a very generic sense, I've done a few bad things. Yeah. And I thought the punishment would come, but the punishment never came. So then, well, I guess the universe doesn't want me to stop. So I kept going. But the the realization came later on as an adult, where 
I always like again narrow minded thinking where I thought karma means an eye for an eye. Mm. I do this bad thing, the bad thing will happen to me mm-hmm. in the same way. But it didn't happen in the way that I thought it would. I was never caught. I was never found out. Mm. You know, it, it. But when I opened my eyes a little bit more, I realized that um, the karma came in different ways. Yeah. Not in the way you thought it would, but difficult still. Hmm. Yeah. It came in different ways, and when I think back about it, like, ooh, now I understand. Now you see. It. Yeah. Yeah. Back and then you wouldn't have. You wouldn't back have then I was seen, ignorant. Yeah. I was ignorant, yeah, and that you wouldn't because it's the universe works in mysterious ways, it right? It does. So if you look at it in a very lineal way, I know I got punished for my crime, so then I got away with it. But mm. then. It's not like it will slap you in the face. It will... The karma will come back to you. And, and I've never believed in karma. Mm. But then now, in a way, I, I can see the, the repercussions, but in a different way. And it's up to me as an adult, as a, as an adult to deal with that now. So, I... Okay, so I'm, I'm realizing this now. And then once you realize that the punishment comes, you now have to take responsibility for your actions yeah. anymore. You can't be like a fuck anymore. Yeah. What's my point? So this is all part of the self realization mm-hmm. thing. So then, okay, now say I'm aware of the problem. I don't do anything, because no, no, no karma. Then now I oh. Now there is the karma. Now, now I realize that my actions have consequences mm. and it's being dealt to me in a different way. So then Coming full to, circle in yeah. a strange way, right? So yeah. then to... Hey! Yeah. Oh, she's banging stuff in there. Okay, so... Yeah. So, uh... To... <laughs> it's a bit of comic relief also. <laughs> so to... To heal... To heal, I needed to... Um... <sighs> Maya's gonna close the window. Uh, I guess we can still hear her a bit, but it's fine. Okay. Um, to heal, or rather, like to improve, because every like I want to be better. Like I want to be a better person. I want to be. I want to be. I want to improve. Right. To improve, to heal, I needed to take action, and another word for karma is action. Right. Mm. So then I needed to do something about it take action to form new samskaras to then move towards a part of non-fear, mm. to move towards my true self. So then that wisdom has now shifted certain things in whatever I do in my my off-the-mat stuff. Yeah. And then going back on trauma, um, I recently had a like my Pancha Kosha workshop immersion mm. thing. So you know Yok Yok Wen? Yok Wen, yeah, yeah. So she teaches kids yoga at mm. at home. Mm. And she's also she's also she also does like uh. I, Do you I know, know she wrote a book. Yes. She, yeah. 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 They, they sell it at home. Mm. Um. So she she was she was the one that gave a talk about trauma in our module. Yes, yeah. Yeah. Yes, so yes, she yes, does yeah. that. Um. And I would like to mm. have a. I want to do a podcast with her at some point. So. Mm. Anyway. You should. She's, yeah, she's but, actually done a podcast with. Uh, Little Lads, I think. I, I, I heard of them, but yeah, I don't know what yeah. that is. Eh. It's 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 quite interesting. Also, I think you okay, would enjoy okay. it. Yeah. Anyway. Um, so, so she talked about how trauma is associated with safety. Mm-hmm. You felt unsafe. That's why that was the trauma, right? Mm-hmm. And now to, 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 I'm butchering the words, la, but it's something like how to overcome your trauma is to be able to feel safe again in that space. So let's say huh. I feel unsafe in Paris because of mm. the danger the, the association that I had I've been robbed there before now I Paris is a dangerous place I don't feel safe anymore so you anymore. go there with a front holding backpack or time. whatever yeah, yeah right so let's say if let's say if you're in an abusive relationship or your mm. home is unsafe mm. then you will always feel unsafe when you're in this space but it's not the home itself it's not the country didn't do anything to you mm. right it's like say your I the it's the idea, the connection that you've mm. made about that place that yeah. is the one that's causing you suffering. Right. So then how can you remove it or how can you redirect it in a different way where you can look back on it and like, mm, yeah, that happened, but I can move forward from this. Mm. So then you 
you rid yourself of that suffering, of that trauma. You can now put that trauma to rest. Mm. You don't assign like any additional unnecessary meaning to something that yeah. happened. So then, if I tie it back to say say present moment, where like like mm. um, let's say I have my own traumas with relationships, mm. but then because I'm I'm like I'm being quite close to Ray now, mm-hmm. and she makes me feel safe in that situation. Yeah. you know. So then, like I am forming new paths towards the same thing. Mm. And like how when we sit, like everybody wants the same thing. Everybody wants to be loved. Everybody wants to feel accepted, blah, blah, blah. Mm. So how can I find love in different ways? Let's say, um, I don't know, let's say through yoga, through jujitsu, mm. through traveling, all these things bring me closer to love. Mm. But then for say something that like, oh, like family, I've always connected it with like pain, suffering or whatever. Mm. Same with relationships, that's that connection. But then, then I met her and then she has created a new path for me that like, eh, mm. this is not so bad. I feel safe mm. and I can feel that safety now. So then now in my mind, I'm like, I know, my ego mind knows that relationships is bad. Mm-hmm. But then like, eh, hey, but then now this new path says it's Doesn't, good. It's not in so line then I'm with very, your narrative. Yeah, so right? then I'm, yeah. I'm a bit confused and I need to be, and so then, part of, like say the old me would have been like, Nah, just like hey, mm-hmm. you know what's you know you've been through you this. Know you know what's up. up. You yeah. know what to do. Stick to the plan. Yeah. And I've been sticking to the plan for since like mm. you know all my <laughs> so since day one I've been yeah. sticking to the plan. Yeah. Moments like this will show up, yeah. and I'll be like, eh, nah. stick to the plan. Yeah. Because when the you know you, you're trying to learn the lesson, right? The, mm. Every time you are born and reborn, you're trying to learn the same lesson. Mm. And then if you don't learn that lesson, you reborn. The same problems will yeah, come. Yeah. That's why if you believe in the past life theory, mm. every time when you're born, you will always you are you notice in your life there's always these synchronicities where everything everything keeps happening to you that challenges you in this this particular way. I heard this story from somebody. Was it you? I get my, uh, it was Lee that oh, oh I don't know lah, but like oh, oh I don't know, it was me, yeah. Yes, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yes, yes, yes. So every time you're gonna have to learn this lesson, and if you don't learn this lesson in this life, next life. And then everything in your life now will always force you to face this uh, mm. issue, mm. whether it's it forgiveness mm. or, or whatever, right? So then uh, everything in your life will sort of point you to this. So then, okay, so now, oh, fuck my, <laughs> lost my train of thought. Uh, Talking about past lives. And then learning lessons. learning lessons. This is a new path for you. Oh no. This happens all the time. Vata, you vata, write vata. this shit down. <laughs> uh, oh man, I really forgot. So I, 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 let me just try and talk and see what I remember again. Creating new paths. Mm-hmm. Uh, synchronicity, synchronicity in re- your life. The same, the same thing, thing happening. What? What? Same thing happening. You will keep having the same thing happening to you until you learn until you the learn lesson. The lesson. So just doing a quick summary for our listeners. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then, I I really can't remember. I guess it was just me having to realize that it's something that I need to relearn, relearn, mm. and take action. And then, like now, let's say you connect all the dots. Mm-hmm. Last time, I got away with it, mm. but then I realized no, I didn't get away with it. Mm. So then there was awareness. There's now a motivation to change and then now there's there's a there's a a preview into how it could be on the mm-hmm, other side mm-hmm. so then yeah. like wait a minute the what, trailer looks good <laughs> what is happening now now, yeah. now I'm starting to understand uh, the bigger picture mm-hmm. you know because last time I was always looking at it in a very narrow way mm. and then through experiences and then once I opened myself up to to learning the lesson and I and I quieted down the ego mind and I let my true self start to speak and start to guide me, right? Then I'm moving towards more positive things, right? I'm not looking towards the lower frequency of, lower vibration of freedom. Mm-hmm. I'm looking towards the higher vibration. Yeah. So then now when you open yourself up to this, then everything starts to fall into place. You start to seek out positive things. You start to teach in a more authentic way. Yes. And because you can teach in an authentic way, you don't feel like a fraud. So then mm. teaching becomes better. Practicing becomes better because you have more compassion. You have more mm. of an understanding. Then you step out into the world more. and everything. And then, and then if you, you teach well, you get more popular, you get more money. And, and, and now everything starts to ripple, you know? It will manifest. Yeah, you plant that seed. Yeah. Yeah. So then y- y- through that, through that um, 
just just t- taking that step and to to really like not listen to your to your narrative, narrative. yeah so i just i i just felt it was very interesting it's and, difficult and, you know, and it's like hard. you're on, yeah it's hard you're to break away feeling, yeah right? from, from your narrative it's hard to break away from a narrative mm. but but as much as we seek out evidence uh, that supports our narrative mm. we also need to give credit to the things and the and the people that try to convince us otherwise right the, that is what it is about so this yeah. is something that i uh, ray told me recently maybe like two days ago mm. so she asked me like okay um okay, maybe i won't ask it in that way i was like so so she said like um if you if you could go back in time and relive your life the same way that you could but you 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 had the same memory of this and you know how it's gonna know how turn out would you would you change anything right and at first I, I didn't <laughs> at first I didn't understand that question because yeah. I, I was like yeah of course I'll change something I, I would just not do the things that that weren't good for yeah, me at that but, time but then you would turn out a totally a different, different person, person yes yeah. so then if let's say you, the answer is yes uh, the answer is no I wouldn't change anything then that means that uh, everything that has happened to you was has meant to happen for a reason yeah shit oh it, goosebumps shout it was, out to Ray yeah <laughs> It was meant to happen to you. Yeah. So then you can't look at your sufferings as something bad. Oh, why did this happen to me? Yeah. Why did my flight get cancelled? Why did COVID yeah. happen? It was meant to happen to you yeah. for you to learn the lesson, to for you to grow and move mm. towards your true self. Yeah. Which is the purpose of yoga. Yeah. So then now let's say you have this idea that like all these bad things are not bad things. They're all lessons. Yeah. So now you can take whatever that happens to you, whatever bad things that happen to you, and see in it a in a different light. light. Yeah. yeah. So, so you you know you carry forward that compassion, you carry mm. forward that um, awareness mm. that you not only you bring to yourself but you bring to the people around you as well. Hmm. Mm. Interesting. Yeah. Food for thought. Yeah. Ah. Just just being able to identify the things that happened to you and know that they were by design mm, almost if you want yeah. to believe in that like yeah. you you have like the people think it's free fate but it's not fate fate is okay you have faith you have fate mm. like you're meant to do this mm. right but you have free will as well yeah and free will is what either pulls you towards it or pulls you away from it mm. Fate will let you meet this person, but free will will tell you like, mm, okay, I think I don't want to. Or path, I, yeah. it's up to you to choose whether. Okay, you know what? I think I'm gonna, I'm gonna listen to this person and mm. what he has to say. Of us is like, nah, I don't want to listen. So then everything will always pull you towards this mm. lesson, your fate, your destiny. Mm. But then it's your free will and your ego mind playing tricks on you to say like, eh, I'm too scared, so let's not do this. Mm. Okay, then a month go, goes by, another opportunity, another door opens up to you. And like, hey, you want to, how you want to, universe is like, you want to learn your lesson now? Mm. Mm, nah, I'm going to uh, take the easy way out. Okay. Mm. And then so on and so on. Until through all your lessons, then you realize like, ooh, you think back who you were today. Say like, say even now, uh, as much as I don't really want to admit it, but who I am now is, is, is a, is a effect of how I dealt with my own issues when I was younger with my dad mm. or whatever. Yeah. And had I, yeah, I've always wished like I had a, a different family or whatever. But then, had I had a different family, I would have been, I could have been a fucker when I grew up. I could have been a spoiled brat. Yeah. But then, I am who I am now. Mm. Because of what yeah, has happened to you. Through, through, your, through your circumstances mm. and through your sufferings, right? Mm. Because you grow as a person through those moments. Yeah. And it's how you pull yourself out of that suffering that mm. has made you a better person. And right. just like you, so like, I feel like different people can like how you can connect to different people on a Mm. soul level like I don't Mm. need to like how we met we met Mm. like we spoke a few times and then like we we were we clicked already because we were and then I walked in on you in the east coast (laughs) (laughs) it wasn't that bad like I Uh, nothing 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 was revealed yeah yeah, nothing was revealed but it was just like a funny moment but but, like we it didn't take long for us to 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 connect to be close Mm. and then like um. And the two of us have been brought up in such different environments, you know. Ooh, interesting. We have such different circumstances, like living and family, and our view on relationships is so mm. different, you know, and our way of life is so different. Mm. But 
when we talk and you were talking about relationship trauma, I had that as well. And yeah. but then you see the because of because of Same the conditions thing. that I right. was brought up in, I felt like I wanted to try again. Mm. But but because of the conditions you were brought up in, you felt like I was right. Mm. Like I knew that this is not supposed to work, you know? And if we if we consider that everybody around us is different and with and with different uh, beliefs, but the same things happen to us and we react differently. Mm-hmm. We have so much to learn from everybody there. And about ourselves. And about ourselves, yeah. yeah. So so the the two of us are so different and, and when we met you weren't even thinking of becoming a yoga teacher. But right. but you see how uh, things like look how unfold. Yeah, yeah, how things unfold and and maybe if not for my first relationship trauma, I wouldn't even have become a yoga teacher. That's you know? true. I yeah. guess like like for my first relationship or so, she mm. was the one that brought me into yoga. Yeah. yeah. So things so everything happen. Happens for, yeah, yeah, everything when you happens look back for on it. a reason. And and to 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 anybody who's who's listening who might resonate with this and you know, they've gone through pain, they've gone through suffering. Uh, maybe they're using yoga as a healing journey now as well. I just feel like it's so important to let mm. them know that they're not alone. Mm. Yeah, I... that they're not alone, and that everybody has something to learn from each other, and that we all can learn from each other's suffering. Mm. Yeah, suffering, suffering is a choice, and like you can choose to suffer because suffering, in a very general sense, is like oh pain, mm. but then pain is pain is inevitable. Suffering is a choice. I mean, it's a mm. very famous quote, right? Yeah, yeah. And how you deal with that pain, and how you choose to react to that pain shows a lot about yourself. Mm. You can be like, oh, the, you know, the world is out to get me. You mm. push the blame away. You don't want to take responsibility yeah, for your exactly, own. Exactly, exactly. Right? Yeah. You don't take ownership you don't of take the ownership. things that you, you can change. Because yeah. if you don't own your pain, your pain is going to own you. Right. Um, and like say, uh, say, say, say for me, um, say I've been hurt in this way, that way. Mm. Say, say, uh, Okay, let's say, let's, say, let's say this generic person A. Okay, let's say John. Mm. John, uh, he, 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 he had a bad breakup, so therefore, um, uh, 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 so, uh, this he shitty swears example. off yeah, like let's something. Say. Yeah. So then that is, how, that is a bad way to deal with that mm. bad situation because now you're shutting yourself out from everything growth else. From and everything growth. else that you can learn Versus from this, you can yeah. take it like, mm, okay, well, maybe that person wasn't the right one or... Mm. Oh, I didn't. I need. To, I need to better myself. I need to be more compassionate. I need yeah. more. Be a, more of a loving husband or, yeah, or right. boyfriend. Yeah. So then you can take that negative thing. Oh, I saw. I saw an example like that. Like like two sons growing up in uh, the same household, uh-huh. uh, and the, and it's an abusive father, and and son A is like <laughs> son B, son, son C. No, <laughs> <laughs> Surya Namaskar A. Okay, so so son A, uh-huh. daughter A. No, I like Sun A. I like Sun A. Yeah. So so Sun A is is like grows up to be exactly like the father, and Sun B is like completely. I don't opposite, want. I yeah. don't want to be him. So yeah. I'm gonna be completely different. Right. And 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 it is it's just so um, it's just so apparent in an example like that. It's that the the lessons you choose to learn from something mm. actually is also entirely up to you. Right. Yeah. So it's up to your environment. Yeah, it's up to your ability. Or so like is, different people is. have different tolerances it to is, pain. Yeah. But it's also like how we can, like, you know, some people like I can just meet them and I can, I feel like I know that this person is very strong, not physically strong, but very mentally strong mm. because of the mm. way that they dealt with that pain. Yeah, yeah. And you can see someone uh, or you just say you by talking to someone, you can yeah. realize that, okay, this person is very grounded mm. because they have taken on that burden of their own pain, they've they've taken on that responsibility, and they have mm. their weight on that sh- on, on their shoulders. Mm. But they they deal with it, you know. Like I've chosen to bear this burden; it's my burden to bear, and I will take responsibility, take responsibility for it, and yeah. I will take my time to heal, and mm. I will just channel it back into the earth. Yeah. Then I can let it go. Right. Versus someone is like, it's not my fault. Bang. It's, yeah, it's not yeah. me. Bang. It's your correct, fault. Bang. Correct. You know. Yeah. So he's deflecting yeah. all the, the thing. And, and if you have that kind of learning uh, attitude, it, wherever it you go, whatever yes. relationship you go into, right, the same thing is just going to keep happening. Yeah. It's something that needs to change at the root. Yeah. You know? And you can see like different people like, ah, I yeah. know why you're like that because mm. you, you have, you've never learned your lesson or you've never 
and take that's responsibility why it keeps for your pain. The same thing yeah. Keeps happening. yeah. So, so then when you see pain as the lesson, then you're not resistant to it. Mm. You're open to putting yourself in quote unquote painful yeah, situations or right. scary situations because yeah. you know that that's the path for growth. You know that that's the yeah. path for healing. Mm. So then, you're no longer afraid. You're you're no longer afraid of uh trying the thing that you were scared scared of. Mm. You understand like okay. I encountered that thing in Paris. Mm. I understand that it's one off, or it's not. Uh, it's not indicative of what that country is mm, about. Mm. I'm gonna take my. I'm gonna go back there. Mm. So then you, and then let's say you go back again, and you're gonna rob mm. again. That's not again. Then, <laughs> then you go back, you heal yeah. some more, and then you go back again, again. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. So then that's like a. It's an idea, an idea to think about. You yeah. know. Hmm. So you should go back to Paris. <sighs> I got a lot of things to unpack, man. Like, even yeah. the thought about it, like I realize what I'm supposed to do. Or I mm. realize, like I mean, you know, yeah, everybody knows what they're supposed to do. It's just harder to implement, and it's also mm. scary. So then that's the the fear, that's the ego, yeah, and then you okay. sort of you just just slowly peel back mm. the layers. And just just to safer. even acknowledge that there's a possibility of going back to Paris again, or that mm. that is something that you can do. To it's fix. a seed, lah. Yeah. It's a seed. Yeah, just plant the seed. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. You've also planted the seed of uh, that diving is dangerous and that you don't enjoy it. <laughs> well, I it's not something. I mean, like, I've dived. I've dived twice or three times, and no, three times. The third and time was with me. Is it third time? Yes. Third time was with yes. me. First time, open, First time water. open water. Second time, advanced. advanced. Third, Third time was with you, leisure me. dive. And yeah. I was like, Where you casually yeah, put my regulator out of my mouth? I just want to put it there. I don't like it. Yeah. I almost killed me. And I don't think this is good for me. Yeah. It's cold. <laughs> I am like, I'm not good in water. Yeah. I need to be on the ground to feel safe. Right. right. Like the land is my element. Yeah. Water is yours. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but it's uh, but it's so funny, right? I mean, we've talked about so many. We've talked about so many things today. We've we've talked about um how learning learning different lessons from different things can help us grow as people mm. and all the uncomfortable situations that we put ourselves in like standing in front of a room of like 40 people these things can be overcome and yeah. like there are many teachers that you know who who have stage fright or who yeah, who yeah. never thought that we, they would be able to hold that kind of space right right and then and then there they are like yeah you know teaching wonderful teaching? classes yeah. impacting people so you really never know yeah, man, what a day. Yeah. <sighs> um, well, I'm, I'm glad that we met. I'm glad that we are friends. I'm mm-hmm. glad. I'm always glad. I'm very, very grateful for mm-hmm. your friendship and your honesty and your advice. You've always been a anchor for me. You've always been my confidant. You've always managed to help me both on and off the mat. You've been my just my nag- spirit just mother, you, uh. my real mother. <laughs> You've been my yeah, my good friend. And well, I mean, I'm glad that we had this chat after yeah, so long. Me too. Mm-hmm. I'm also grateful for you, and I feel like I have a lot to learn from you, from your thoughts, your outlook on life, your experiences. Yeah, it's it's opened up my mind to acknowledging that there are a lot of different people around with different circumstances and mm. different views and that we can all still get along. You know, mm. you don't have to surround yourself with people who agree with you all the time. That's true. Yeah, that's something then that you a end coward up, would do, you know. You end up... Uh, you just re- reinforce why reinforce, everybody, everybody nobody reinforce challenges you, yeah. that narrative, you know. So I feel like I've learned a lot from you. And between the two of us, from teacher to student, now you, teacher to hey. me, a student, I feel like a really a really uh, nice way to close this podcast will be with the Om Sahana Vavatu chant, if you are okay with it. Are you going to chant it? Yes. Feel free, please do. Okay. I'm going to take. I'm gonna close my eyes. Close your eyes, yeah. Okay. Everybody close your eyes. <sighs> so just before I uh, rattle on in Sanskrit, uh, it's... it's mainly about it being between the teacher and the taught. He just brought the mic closer to me. That didn't make me nervous at all. It's between the teacher and the taught, um, learning together, being enriched together. 
always holding space for each other, never hating each other. And the chant ends with Om, peace, peace, peace. Uh, of which, uh, if you are alone and in a safe space, I would invite you to chant that together with me. Uh, Aaron will chant that together with uh, me as well. I'm just, it. yeah, uh, just the last part, Om Shanti, Shanti, mm. Shanti. Okay, so let's just close the eyes. And even if you don't immediately understand the Sanskrit words, um, just allow the sound vibrations to wash over you. Om Sahana Vavatu Sahana Bunaktu Sahaviryam Karavavahai Tejasvina Varitamastu Mahavirvishavahai Together. Om Shanti, Shanti, Shanti. Mm. And you can bring the eyes open. <sighs> Thank you, everybody, for listening uh, to what we have to say. That was nice. <laughs> All right, I don't see any other better way to close out this podcast. So, <laughs> before we go, how can people reach you? Ah, okay. So, um, on Instagram, my handle is May Summer Night. That's M A E S U M M E R N I G H T, as in Mid Summer Night, but just changing the mid to May M A E. Uh, if you're interested in coming with me for a diving adventure, <laughs> <laughs> you can reach me at Lighthouse uh, Adventure Co. Our handle is Lighthouse, spelled as it sounds, A-D-V for adventure for short, dot C-O. Hmm. And if you want to engage me and Drew to sing at your next yeah. event, whenever that can happen, uh, you can follow our Derby Adventures at Us the Hippies. That's U S T H E H I P P I E S. Otherwise, just come and flow with me at Yoga Movement. Oh. <laughs> um, any final words? Any other final, final words before we go for lunch? Yeah, I'm very hungry. Mm. <laughs> um, if there's anything uh, that I can do to remind our listeners is to remind them all that uh, you are enough. Whatever has happened to you, whatever you may be facing now, uh, however you have been dealing with your pain and your suffering, know that you are enough. That is all. <laughs> <sighs> okay. We're done. Namaste. Oh, you. <laughs> uh, light in me, bows and light in you. Yeah. Why not? Thank you. Thank you. <sighs> hmm. That was a nice little chant at the end that she did. Thank you. Thank you for doing it. I uh, hope you enjoyed it. And Mayan has a very nice voice, as you know, as you've heard. And I'm. Uh, she should probably start her own podcast or a meditation app or something like that to make us all fall asleep too. And uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you managed to learn something and had something to take away from this. And I've heard this podcast about like three times now, three four times. Uh, like after doing all the edits and stuff, and. As I listen back on it, it, it is, I mean, like, I'm reflect, I'm reflecting about this now. So, like, I, I find myself, like, because I'm hearing myself, like, I'm hearing myself talk, and it's weird, but it, it's, it's like, I'm hearing my voice, but it's like, someone else is speaking like like I'm hearing this person called Aaron talking about his experience and be, because like I, I can hear it and it's like out of my own head I find myself showing this person a little bit more compassion a little bit more understanding and and this 
kind of it kind of feels like therapy you know like my own self therapy i'm just journaling my own thoughts or being able to hear myself speak in that way it's like wow they're really putting on this guy or like oh i can relate to it you know and i don't know like it like being able to talk about it and being able to share and being able to 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 listen back on myself just made me feel a bit more compassionate towards myself if that makes any sense and being able to own up to it to take responsibility for it and i guess being on this like revealing it on this platform to be accountable for it so yeah uh anyway i'm fine i'm fine i don't need anybody to fucking coddle me i don't need anybody to make a big deal out of this you don't have to be weird if you see me at the studio or whatever i'm fine i you know i don't need any just you know, it's fine just pretend it's normal and uh i want to thank mayan again for being my friend and for creating a safe space for for just creating a safe space so that we can both be vulnerable thank you for listening to this episode i enjoy doing it and i hope you enjoy listening to it If you like what you hear, share it with your friends, post it on IG, tag me, I'll repost it. You can also support the podcast by donating to the coffee page. I mentioned it in the start. I'll mention it again, coffee.com/mostlyyoga. Links in the description. Let me know if you have any questions. Feel free to reach out, say hi to me at the studio, say hi to her at the studio. I'll say hi back. I'm sure she'll say hi back to you as well. And uh, that's it. I will. I'm gonna go get a haircut tomorrow. My hair is fucking long. It's in my face every day. I hate it. I look silly with my long hair, so I'm just gonna get a cut. And I am also gonna go to the market tomorrow. I need to get some carrots. I need to get some vegetables. Uh yeah, let me know if you want anything. Okay. Bye.